woes of Washington continued last week as the winless Redskins took on the San Francisco 49ers. Terry Metcalf's fumble taken by Hicks for a 49ers score. Joe Theismann, one of two interceptions on the day. Again, Hicks the culprit. Another Washington fumble as the Redskins fell behind early. And then it was Tom Flick's turn. The rookie from Washington had no better luck. Two interceptions for Flick as the 49ers went on to an easy 30-17 victory. Meanwhile, the Chicago Bears fared a little better against the Minnesota Vikings behind the running and the passing of quarterback Vince Evans. His best ever day as a pro, 26-43, including two touchdown passes to Brian Bashnagel. But in the crunch, field goal kicker Hans Nielsen missed the three-pointer that would have sent the game to overtime. Today, they hope for better things, the Bears and the Redskins. CBS Sports presents the National Football League. Today, the Washington Redskins versus the Chicago Bears. A perfect autumn afternoon at Chicago Soldier Field. Hello, everyone. Tim Ryan with Johnny Morris here. And Johnny, for a team that is 0-5, the Washington Redskins have got some very interesting statistics. It's actually, it is unbelievable. What a paradox. Let's take a look. They are number two in total offense in the NFC, not too far behind Minnesota. Number one in the NFC in total defense, ahead of Los Angeles. But the sticker is, here it is, NFC turnovers, 21 for Washington, the most in the entire NFL. That, along with a lot of penalties, over 400 yards in penalties, and you can't win ball games that way. Well, and the Redskins are a very young team, and they've also been decimated with injuries. Indeed, today, once more, they'll be without five starters. Of course, the Bears have been hurting, too. Yes, they have. Ricky Watts is out there, top flight receiver, their speed man. Dennis Lick is out at offensive tackle with a knee injury. And the big question mark today is Walter Payton. He has a sore league. He injured it uh, last week a little bit, and this week trying to save his son from falling down the stairs. So Walter Payton is really banged up. He's going to start and give it a try. We're ready for the kickoff. All right, Johnny. It'll be Mike Connell, uh, the punter for the Redskins, who will kick it off. Mosley bothered with a bit of a leg muscle injury. will kick the field goals, but it'll be Connell doing the kicking off. And deep for the Chicago Bears is David Williams, number 22. Williams from the six-yard line. Stopped at the 24 and squirmed ahead to the 25. It was number 21, Mike Nell, was making the tackle for Washington. And so the Bears start from their 25-yard line with Peyton the starter with Matt Suey, Brian Bashnagel, Ken Marjoram starting for the injured Ricky Watts at flanker. Along the front, Albrecht, Jackson, Neal, Emmanuel Zanders, and Keith Van Horn making their second starts in a row. Robin Earl, the tight end. Zanders acquired from New Orleans. Van Horn, the rookie number one pick. First down for the Chicago Bears. They're one and four. The Redskins looking for their first victory of the season. The Bears to our right in the dark uniforms. Washington to our left in white. Vince Evans. Throwing on first down. Complete to Williams. No, incomplete. He dropped it. Flag was thrown on the play. Williams appeared to have the ball, took the hit from the cornerback, and dropped the ball. It is incomplete. Interesting formation for the Chicago Bears. They had Peyton as the lone back and uh, four receivers, so that's obviously a passing formation. The Bears came out and threw on first down. Our referee is Dick Jorgensen today. We'll get the call from him with the first infraction Illegal on the motion, first play. Number 78, offense, decline. Second down. Keith Van Horn, the rookie from USC, illegally in motion. Declined by Washington. Second and 10, Chicago from their own 25. 57 degrees here in Chicago. Winds from the northeast at 12 miles an hour. Peyton and Suey in the pro set. Evans. Intended for the tight end, Robin Earl, incomplete. On the coverage was Mark Murphy, number 29. An unhappy Vince Evans looking downfield, bringing up third down. Let's take a look at the Redskins defensively. Lorch, Butts, Wilbur Young starting at the right defensive tackle. Dexter Manley, the rookie from Oklahoma, for the injured Matt Mendenhall. The linebackers, Brad Dusick, his second game back off an injury. Neil Okowitz in the middle, and Rich Millat on the right side. Parrish, Peters, Murphy, and Lavender, one of the better secondaries in the National Football League. Third and ten for the Bears. Slot formation right. Williams is in. Evans, deep side, complete, and a 
first down for the Chicago Bears, Ryan Bashnagel, number 84, and Evans was right on the money with that one. It moves the ball to the Chicago 38-yard line. Okay, just a down and out as Bashnagel goes covered by Parrish, who has that sore knee, and Parrish was pretty close, but the pass was perfect and the move was perfect. First down, Chicago. Bashnagel goes out to the right. Matt Suey, the running backs. Ken Marjoram in the slot right. Flag down. Keaton has running room. Another flag is the blue ball. But play had been whistled dead at the 45-yard line. Two flags on the play. The Redskins appeared to be offside. Then a second flag was thrown. So we'll wait and see what Dick Jorgensen comes up with here. It is offside against Washington, and evidently both flags were for the same penalty, and we lost the sound from the microphone of Dick Jorgensen on the play. Let's see if we'll get it this time. So the Bears, with a decision to make, Vince Evans talks it over with Jorgensen. They gained about seven yards on the play to the 45-yard line of Chicago. And it looks like they will take the five and get the first down play over again. So they'll spot it at the 44 yard line. Offside, number 99, defense, still first down. Wilbur Young, the 11 year veteran from William Penn, coming off a shoulder injury, was the guilty party. And there's a look at the penalty yardage, and uh, the Redskins, as Johnny said at the top, between turnovers and penalties, it's been murder for them in the first five games of the season. And Peyton looked pretty good the first time he carried that ball. He sure did. This is Suey. Matt Suey works his way around the right tackle, gaining about four yards on the play. It'll bring up second and one for the Bears. First man to hit him, the linebacker, Dusick, number 59. Brad Dusick, he's back from a shoulder injury. The Redskins have had a bunch of shoulder injuries and just a plethora of injuries since the season began. With so much emphasis on Peyton in the past few games, it should be that Matt Suey ought to be able to pick up some yards because everybody is really keen on Walter. He's only averaging 3.2 yards per carry this year, far below his average. Peyton had very little practice this week because of that injury at his home. He's ready to go. Evans incomplete for Bashnagel. Make it uh, Peyton. Number 34, Peyton unable to hold on. A short pass that had the first down yardage, but Peyton unable to hold it. Olkowitz, the middle linebacker on the coverage. Number 52, so it is third and one for Chicago. And there's been a lot of talk about the fact that Peyton's carrying the ball from scrimmage an awful lot to, to use him more as a receiver. He's caught a lot of passes for Chicago over the years and it's starting to pile up, but they're... I think you're going to see a metamorphosis of the Chicago Bear offense, and I'll get into that in just a moment. Third and one, Bears with double tight ends in. Peyton has the first down at the 50-yard line. Flag is down. He was hit there by Jarris White and number 57, Rich Millot. I think you're going to have a holding penalty against the Bears, so they're going to be in a third down long passing situation. Peyton did get the first down, but uh, to no avail now as Walter Peyton seems to be okay. He hasn't practiced, as you mentioned, Holy all week. Number 26, offense, still third down. Oh, that's Matt Sui, the lead back uh, holding. That's a no-no. Now the Bears have Marcus Anderson in, first year receiver from Tulane. Acquired as a free agent from the Rams. He's a speed demon. Marjorie in with him as we see Neil Armstrong on the sideline, hoping they can regain the first down on third and 11. Three wide receivers are in. Bashnagel, Marjorie, and Henry. Blitz, blitz. And quickly downfield, way over the intended receiver, Marjorie. Evans looked like he was unloading there as the Redskins came with a big blitz and getting up slowly is number eight, Vince Evans. Dexter Manley, the rookie from Oklahoma, was leading the charge for Washington. It'll be fourth down for the Bears. And that's when the blitz works. They put enough pressure on Vince. He had to unload the ball and just throw it away as Dexter Manley playing at that defensive end spot put a lot of pressure on. They had a blitz up the middle, and it worked for Washington. So Bob Parsons with the first punt of the afternoon brings in a 39.8 average. Oh, it's a good one. Big kick. Backing up Nelms to his 15-yard line. Mike Nelms bumped heavily and 
really decked at the 28 yard line and maybe a little hurt on the play it was Jay Hilgenberg reserve center for the Bears who put the lick on him and Nelms always a dangerous punt returner indeed one of the very best in the National Football League will return with a scoreless tie. Joe Gibbs the head coach of the Washington Redskins in his debut season as a head coach coming from San Diego and it's been a rough start for Joe he's confident he's got some good young players on this team who will develop first down for the Redskins and again it's the number 25 Joe Washington coming back from an ankle injury he is shut down at the line of scrimmage. Alan Page with the tackle looked like the Bear defense was running all over the place trying to get adjusted but Alan Page ran right into where the offensive play was good play by Allen. So the Redskins with Joe Theismann at quarterback have Joe Washington and John Riggins at the running backs. Riggins number 44, Washington number 25. Mike Singletary has come into the ball game at linebacker. Allen Page is out on second and nine, and this is Washington trying to sideline. Slipped as he was pulled from behind by Otis Wilson. Gained about four yards on the play to the Redskins 35-yard line. Pretty good play by the Redskins as Washington got to the outside. Only a great play by uh, Otis Wilson, who had got caught inside. He made the old necktie tackle and brought him down, but not before they got almost six yards as you look at the offensive line. And they're basically, as far as the linemen are concerned, you have mostly rookies. You got May, Grim, Bostic, Melvin Jones, and Joe Jacoby, who's had to move over from the guard position, playing with a lot of young people in that offensive line. And that's tough, Tim. Sure is been a problem for the Redskins right from the start of the season a combination of having to go with rookies because of all of the injuries third down and five Theismann oh, almost intercepted intended for Washington out of the backfield diving in was Gary Fensick number 45 and nearly picked it off so it'll be fourth down for Washington and the defense gets the hand of the crowd Hampton Osborne Page and Harris getting the start for the injured Mike Hartenstein across the front so Washington will have to punt it away. Jeff Fisher is the deep man for the Bears, awaiting it at the 21-yard line of Chicago. Mike Connell is the punter for Washington from the sunlight into the shade. Good punt at the 25. Fisher, from USC, is met head-on by number 39, and that is Otis Wansley reserve running back and so the Bears will start with fairly good field position from their own 34 when we return to Soldier Field. Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris back here at Soldier Field in Chicago. We are scoreless with now 11.08 remaining in the first period of play. Peyton and Suey the running backs in motion back to the ball is Ken Marjoram. Nowhere is Roll is uh, Matt Suey or was it Harper? Well, it was Matt Suey. And now for an NFL Today report, let's go to Brent Musburger in New York. Hey, Tim, we have a big storyline developing down in Atlanta. The Falcons were behind by 13. Now they have scored 21 unanswered points. Here goes Bartkowski, 23 yards. Alfred Jenkins, Pat Hayden has just been injured. Jeff Rutledge is in the game. Back now to Tim Ryan in Chicago's Soldier Field. Well, a big one there in the NFC with those two teams tied going into that game. We'll keep you updated as it goes along. Meanwhile, it is second and ten here. No gain on first down for the Bears and not much there as Walter Payton trying the middle. Picked up maybe two on the play. First man to hit him, Dexter Manley, number 72. Mayor Jane Byrne, as usual, in attendance here at Soldier Field. During the cold weather attire, although it's uh, still a very pleasant autumn day, but starting to feel that famous Chicago chill. Yeah, they call it the Windy City, <laughs> and there is a little wind. I'd say it's a 15 miles an hour, and the Bears are going against it right now. It is third and eight for Chicago from their 35. Slot formation right. We're looking at Vince Evans. Deep sideline, Bashnagel incomplete on the coverage. Number 24, Lamar Parrish, the 12-year man from Lincoln. Good one-on-one -on -one coverage by Lamar Parrish. He went with Bashnagel all the way down the sidelines and then dipped to the outside, the same play they ran a few moments ago. This time, Parrish is right there. As you look at a second-quarter score, look at Philadelphia, 24-7 over New Orleans. Pittsburgh, 10-0 over Cleveland in the second quarter. 
The Jets lead New England 21-7, second quarter. And the quarterback drama continues with the Rams. Pat Hayden has been carried off the field on a stretcher, and I would guess, and we'll try and confirm it, that that means Dan Pastorini will get his opportunity. Parsons punt. Taken by Nelms at his 22. Nelms running well. A flag is down as Nelms picks his way out to the 33-yard line. And he's swarmed under there by several Bears, leading the pack, number 25, and that is Todd Bell, reserve defensive back, but a flag down on the play. Which is going to uh, kill Washington's field position because the penalty is probably against the Redskins. And they have had, as we mentioned early in this telecast, a lot of penalties, over 400 yards, second in the NFL in total yards penalized, and that, along with all those turnovers, makes life tough for Joe Gibbs and Joe Theismann and uh, this Washington team. And the Washington fans. Yes. 35 receiving team. First down. Ricky Klatt, who has just been reactivated by the Redskins, a guilty party, illegal use of hands on the play, and it's now first down at the 19-yard line as we see Joe Gibbs unhappy with this field position, but still nobody on the scoreboard. We'll be back. Well, Gary Ellis been a fine for Green Bay as they've jumped in front of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That's a key game in the NFC Central. The Honey Bears trying to exhort the Bears' defense. It's first down for the 19 for the Washington Redskins. Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris here on CBS Football from Soldier Field in Chicago. Theismann complete. To Joe Washington. Washington dipsy doodles his way over the 20 as he was forced out by Otis Wilson, the young linebacker from Louisville, after a gain of about three yards. Terry Schmidt in on the tackle as well. You can see 55. Otis Wilson got caught inside, and he was responsible for that back out there, and that gave Washington a chance to get to the outside. Puts a little dipsy do and gets around the corner, gets a few yards as the Redskins. Not much, gained, though. Not really too much. What, no, three yards? Know, what impresses me about Wilson, I mean, that's a young player's mistake, but he is so fast for a line. Oh, he's got tremendous athletic oh. ability. He recovered beautifully there to prevent uh, his miscue from turning into a big mistake. Washington trying the left side, running hard over the 25 to the 27-yard line. A gain of about five yards for Washington. And Lee Coons, number 57. Mike Singletary, number 50. A pair of linebackers making the tackle for Chicago. Atlanta in front of Los Angeles, 21 to 20 in the second period. What a ball game there. Jeff Rutledge has passed to Henry Child for the Rams score. Rutledge just coming in for Pat Hayden. Well, if Russian gets hurt, then you'll know that you're Pastorini. Right, that's right. They'll have to get the Pastorini. And listen, Pastorini make a better story. Let's face that's it. right. Third and a yard and a half. But it is Rutledge, a quarterback for the Rams. Blitz all out the throw, big blitz on, incomplete. Intended for Art Monk and a flag on the play. It looks like interference is called against Otis Wilson. It looked to me like their feet tangled up, and uh, they're going to call Otis Wilson for interference on the play, which would make it a first down for Number 55, Washington. defense, first up. Now watch as they collide here. You're going to see just the, well, he kind of got, got his arms on his back there. And the receiver went down. It's one of those situations. First down, Washington, and uh, that's the only way they've got a first down so far, right, that's by penalty? Very close uh, decision on that call. Yes. I mean, there's a case of a guy, looked like Olsen was trying to reach, uh, Wilson was trying to reach in front to uh, get his hand on the ball. That's when their feet got tangled up, and I think he was a victim of the timing of that uh, play more than anything else. But nonetheless, it is first down for Washington. The ball at their 27 with Terry Metcalf in the lineup now for Joe Washington. Theismann out to Metcalf. Metcalf looking for some blocking help and a nice move along the sideline for a gain of about seven yards. Lee Coons, number 57, forced him out. And they're going to spot it at the 34-yard line of the Redskins as we see the Washington coaching staff. Don Bro, Joe Bugle, Joe Gibbs in the middle of your screen now. The head man. I like his attitude in our discussions with him last night. Uh, he says, you know, we've got to go with these kids on our offensive line. We think we've got some quality players. And maybe they're going to grow and, and learn in this uh, difficult season. We should have ourselves some fine players down the road. John Riggins first carry of the game, and that's a typical John Riggins carry, dragging bodies with him. 
and appears to have the first down and does. Now for an NFL Today report, let's go to Brent Musburger in New York. All right, Tim Ryan, the story on Pat Hayden is not good. Broken left leg at the ankle bone. Jeff Rutledge takes over. Here's the one-yard pass to Henry Childs that you spoke about. 21-20, Atlanta leading, but again, Hayden out probably for the year. Back down to Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris in Chicago. All right, Brent, there was the touchdown pass from Rutledge to Childs, and what an exciting game that one is. First down for Washington. We are scoreless here in Chicago. Theismann Standing catch for a first down for Washington at the 41 of the Chicago Bears. Doug Plank and Terry Schmidt on the coverage. What a great play by Art Monk, as so often happens. The offensive receiver looks back first. Terry Schmidt was with him, but Monk spotted the ball and made the grab, and it was into double coverage. As you can see, there was deep help coming over from Gary Fensick. First down for the Redskins. 19-yard gain from Theismann to Art Monk. Alan Page goes out. And Al Harris continues at the defensive end. They've got an extra linebacker in on first down. Riggins hit right at the line of scrimmage, stacked up well by the front four of the Chicago Bears. Got maybe a yard. The Bears went into a 3-4 defense that time. They brought in Mike Singletary, took one of the defensive linemen out. We haven't seen the 3-4, the 34 from the Chicago Bears, at least this year and of course a part of that's because Mike Hartenstein is hurt he has a broken thumb that he suffered last week and he is out of the game he could play if called upon but now you can see Singletary and Otis Wilson and Gary Campbell coming off the field as a second down into a passing situation the Bears bring in the extra back in fact they have six defensive backs in there right now and Bruce Heron at linebacker it is second and seven and they give it to Washington trying wide left and Washington bounces his way out to the 31 yard line of the Chicago Bears. It'll be just short of the first down, it appears. Good running, good blocking out the left side. Overshide made the hit. And a good call by the Redskins because of the fact that they saw that uh, Bear defense the way it was. And you can get more yards running sometimes when you see six defensive backs down the field. They got to the outside and almost got the first down. So it's a pretty good call. Rams fans, a word on Pat Hayden, a broken leg, probably out before the season. Jeff Rutledge in at quarterback in that big game in Atlanta. Third down in a yard here in Chicago. Double tight ends are in. Wansley is in at running back with Riggins. Big John Riggins has a good hole and a first down to the 25-yard line. Good blocking on the right side from Joe Jacoby, the rookie from Louisville, and Melvin Jones, the rookie from Houston, who was on injured reserve a year ago. So to all intents and purposes, still a rookie. Okay, good block there by Wansley and Melvin Jones, 61, as Riggins broke into the backfield and got some tough yardage before he's finally brought down. John Riggins, who is going to have to improve each week because of the fact he was off a year, as you know, Tim. It takes a little while to get your legs under, and he's going to improve a lot because Wilbur, he's got it. Wilbur Jackson is out. First down for the Redskins, driving at the Bears, 25. Heisman up the middle, incomplete. A lot of traffic up the middle, and indeed one of the officials right in the middle of the traffic, too. It was intended for Don Warren, the tight end, number 85. Have we ever had a reception by an official? Because he came very close to catching that without trying. John Keck, the umpire, in on the play. I don't know whether he's got good hands or not, Johnny. <laughs> This telecast presented by authority of the NFL intended for the private use of our audience. Any rebroadcast or other use of this telecast without the express written consent of the Chicago Bears and the National Football League is prohibited. Art Monk, by the way, was wide open on that last play. Second and ten for Washington at the Bears' 25-yard line. Monk in motion behind the ball. Theismann a deep drop. Running out of time, gets the short pass off to the release man who's hit immediately. That's Warren, the tight end, and Lee Coombs dropped him after a gain of three. It'll bring up third and seven, and the Redskins' first uh, critical offensive situation of the day. And you're going to see Al Harris, number 90, come from the right side of your screen, and he has a lot of speed here. Theismann does a good job of getting out, and you see Warren just dip out after blocking and making the catch to save the sack. So now we have a third and seven situation for the Redskins, and this is where they've had problems, Tim, as you know. When they get down to the 20-yard line and on in, they're just not able to take it on into the end zone, and this has been one of the reasons that all those great stats, but not winning football games. Three wide receivers are in. Virgil Say joining Thompson and Monk. Theismann for Monk. Complete. Excellent coverage by Terry Schmidt. Number 
44. Pass was there, but so was the defender. And so it is fourth down. The difference this time was that Terry Schmidt was running with him, and he looked at the same time the receiver did. See, Terry Schmidt has his head back and may knock the ball down in contrast to the play a couple of minutes ago when Schmidt was running downfield and the receiver looked first. So Joe Gibbs is frustrated once again here early in the game as the Redskins will go for a field goal from the 30, which would make it 40 yards. Mark Mosley, number three, will be in. Remember, he's bothered by a slight leg injury. That's pretty good foot into it, but it is wide to the left. Mosley misses wide left. And so at 3.53 remaining in this first quarter of play, we still have a scoreless football game, but the Redskins were moving the ball on the Bears, but came up empty. Field goal, they'll start from their own 23-yard line. 3.53 to go in the quarter. The Bears have yet to score in the first period in the first five games of this season. Suey off left tackle. Good defensive play by Dexter Manley, the rookie from Oklahoma. Yes, it was. He beat Ted Albrecht and got in on the tackle there. A good play by, by Manley to stop that one. As you mentioned, the Bears haven't scored in the first quarter all year. They've been outscored 36 to nothing. The Redskins have had trouble, too. I think in the Cardinal game, they scored early. But other than that, they've been playing from behind most, uh, most of the season. And when you play from behind, that's, that's trouble, as you know. Indeed. Second and ten, no gain on the play. Suey and Peyton, and they split back formation. Uh -oh. Bucks chasing Evans, and Evans will take the dive at the 21-yard line as Carl Lorch arrived from in front after Butts chased him from behind. A loss of about two yards on the play, third and 12. Let's see, 65. There is Butts. Dave Butts coming through. Matt Suey's trying to block 295 pounds. Butts didn't get there, but he forced Evans to run, and then he ran into Carl Lorch. Good defensive play by the Redskins. Third and 12. Dexter Manley certainly been impressive. Now we see Butts and Lorch, the left side, getting into it. Matt Mendenhall. First-year man from Brigham Young has been last year on injured reserve. Would have been the starter today at right defensive end, but he's out with a knee injury. Three wide receivers for the Bears. It is Joe Lavender, number 20, taking the ball inside the 25 of the Chicago Bears. And that pass well off. Mark Lavender had it thrown right at him, intended for Ken Marjoram. Yes, Marjoram was running a flag pattern, and Evans got a lot of zip on it. Lavender just dropped off with his spot there and just came in, and he threw into a lot of coverage there. There were a lot of white jerseys, and a good play by Joe Lavender, who's been one of the better cornerbacks in the league for a long time. Joe oh. Lavender, nine-year man from San Diego State. There he is, number 20, acquired in 1976 in a deal with the Eagles. So the Redskins great position once more. First down at the 24-yard line of the Chicago Bears. Ricky Thompson in motion. Quick pass for Monk overthrow. Good pressure from the Bears. They had Hampton and Osborne both right in on Theismann. Johnny, that looked to me like a short drop call, but still the Bears had two guys blowing in there. They were in there in a hurry, and he had to throw, as you see. Next Sunday, look at this. Philadelphia at Minnesota, the doubleheader games, Washington, Miami. Tampa Bay at Oakland, and you can check your local listings for the game in your area. Well, the Washington fans will be seeing the Redskins in Miami. There's Joe Gibbs, the offensive staff on the sideline. Second down, let's see what the Redskins come up with here. They've got one running back in. Theismann complete to Rick Walker. The tight end gets it to the... 21-yard line of the Bears, where he's hit by Todd Bell, the extra defensive back, the rookie from Ohio State. Walker did a good job. You're going to see him get jammed by number 25. Walker comes off the line out of the double tight end situation. Here's the jam, 25, the bottom of your screen, and then he just plays off the jam and takes the short pass, and then Todd Bell does what he's supposed to do, make the tackle. So we have a third down seven situation, and they ran out of the double tight end. They haven't done that that much in this game. They've been very successful with it in prior games. Well, again, another important third down play for Washington and Bears territory. Leisman has time, and it is incomplete. Intended for Ricky Thompson, the pass was there. So was Terry Schmidt putting the hit on Thompson. He could not hold on. 
Good play by Terry Schmidt on a one-on-one -on -one coverage, and a lot of teams go after Terry Schmidt, but they don't seem to burn him that much. That wasn't the greatest move of all. Here comes the move here, down to the outside. Schmidt plays the move, comes back to the ball, makes the tackle, and it's just a heck of a defensive play. Well, it is, but it's also the kind of a ball a receiver's got to hold on to in a situation like that. Thompson did not. It is a 38-yard try now for Mark Mosley, and this one is good. So Mark Mosley on his second try of the afternoon has the first points on the scoreboard in this football game. We're down to 127 remaining in the first period at Chicago Soldier Field with the Redskins taking a 3-0 lead and utilizing the interception by Joe Lavender to set up the score. The Bears tightening their defense twice in a row in their own territory to prevent the major score, but surrendering the field goal to Mosley. Well, so far in this game, Washington has not committed a, a turnover. Joe said last night, Joe Gibbs said that one of these days we're going to put it all together and play a mistake-free game. Let's see if that happens today. As you look at Cincinnati, has taken an early lead over Baltimore, three to nothing. Seattle, same score over Houston. And Kansas City on top of Oakland. Boy, the Raiders are off slow, aren't they? Sure are. The Raiders were two and three going into this game. And as you, of course, I think they were in the same situation last year and came back and went all the way to the Super Bowl, so you can't count them out. Their offense just hasn't been anything like it was a year ago. Imagine uh, getting shut out. That's something that the Raiders, uh, an offensive-minded team, very seldom do, to say the least. This series has a great history. It goes back to 1932. The Bears in Washington. Ooh. Connell, good kickoff, taken right at the goal line by Dave Williams. Williams gets out to the 19 of the Chicago Bears, where he's hit there by Jarris White. White, the reserve cornerback, acquired from Tampa Bay by Washington. And one Redskin player is slow to get up. As we see Dave Williams, one of the good return men in the National Football League. Injured player for the Redskins is Mike Clark, their reserve defensive end. Picked up recently. Cut from the Los Angeles Rams, where he was the seventh round draft pick this year. Let's hope it's not another serious one. The Redskins have had uh, 11 starters miss games so far this year. They've had 17 key injuries, and that really makes it tough on a football team, especially a young one that has a lot of inexperienced players anyway. So. Now we'll see the play again on the kickoff. There he is. It looks like he got hit on the front of the knee. Yeah, that pileup action there. And there you see Jiggett's being dumped on top of him. So Clark in a little bit of pain. And uh, today the Redskins in the starter department are without uh, Russ Grimm was unable to go. He could play today. He's out with a knee injury. George Stark, the right tackle, is unable to go today. He's out of the game entirely with a hand injury. Wilbur Jackson is out with a knee injury. And uh, defensively, Monty Coleman unable to go in uniform, but uh, not a starter today, along with Matt Mendenhall scheduled to start at defensive right end. So five starters out of action today. And now they've lost another reserve man, at least temporarily. And Mike Clark. And Rich Castor is in uniform. They signed him this week. Uh, he'll play with number 82, and we could see him before this game is out. He was a, a great one. He's still a good football player, but uh, for many, many, many years, uh, was one of the top tight ends in football. Well, Evans for the Bears. Vince Evans coming off his best week as a pro a week ago. Not off to a great start so far with 116 to go in the first period. Evans is one for seven for 14 yards. Has been intercepted, has been sacked once. The Bears have had only one first down in this first period. They are starting from their 19. Evans gets some time incomplete for Batchnagel, who was hit hard by number 24, Lamar Parrish, and Bashnagel is slow to get up. That pass sailed on Evans. Bashnagel did not have much of a chance on it. He took quite a lick. It looks like he might have hurt his wrist on the play. Brian Bashnagel, who had two touchdown passes last week, and we're seeing a tendency by Vince Evans once again. He, early in a ball game all year, he's been throwing high. He gets off to a slow start. As we mentioned, they haven't scored in the first quarter this year as Bashnagel goes off the field, a good, tough football player who has what you call the synchronized moves. He's not a deep threat, 
but you want that 12, 15 yard reception, Brian Bashnig will give it to you. They now have only one reserve wide receiver, and Marcus Anderson will be in for Bashnagel. Second and ten. Screen pass. What a play by Neil Olkowitz for a touchdown, Washington. Olkowitz read that screen, picked off the pass, and walked into the end zone from the 19-yard line. And the Redskins have now jumped into a 9 to nothing lead. Olkowitz, the third-year man for Maryland. Look at him read this, number 52. And there he goes, right into the screen as he watches Walter Payton. He goes where Walter Payton goes, and he went right through the lineman, batted the ball up in the air, and takes it in for the touchdown. The Redskins are off to a fast start. Easy touchdown. What a great play. He just smelled Walter Payton, just watched him. He watched where Payton went, and he went over into the screen zone. There wasn't that much pressure on the point is good. It's 10 to nothing, Washington. Well, you have to credit the Washington defense with uh, setting up these 10 points. As you can see the screen, there is not a lot of pressure on Evans. He waits for Walter to go out into the flat and then ill-advisedly threw the ball and boom, in comes Mr. Okowitz and takes it in for the touchdown, number 52, Washington, and now they have the lead. 10-yard touchdown interception by Olkowitz. And so with 103 to go, there's your scoreboard. The Washington Redskins looking for their first victory of the National Football League season in 1981. Their first victory under new head coach Joe Gibbs. And uh, the Chicago Bears with troubles of their own have won only once. Now have to try and dig out from behind. And remember, they haven't scored in the first period of a game this season. They've only got a minute three to do it today. You know what Okowitz's major in college was? Law enforcement. Law enforcement. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I guess with Ed Simonini over in Baltimore, who was hurt early in the preseason, uh, he and Okowitz have got to be the two smallest middle linebackers in the league. They're not big guys at all. Okowitz just six feet, 220. But uh, you can tell that he's got the smarts. He read that play and showed some good hands as well. Williams takes Connell's kickoff from the three-yard line of the Bears. Williams has some running room, gets out to the 24. A flag is down as Jarris White, number 45, put the ankle tackle on Dave Williams. Well, Richie Pettibone, former Chicago Bear defensive back, who is the defensive coordinator for Washington, has got to be happy. He's had two fine interceptions by his defenders. Uh, Joe Lavender made a great interception. In fact, it was probably the best reception of this game so far. He went up and leaped and, and made the interception, and now Okowitz. So the Redskins uh, are playing some football. And the infraction against the Chicago Bears will march it back to the eight-yard line. Illegal block in the back above the waist, number 37, receiving team, first up. Willie McClendon, number 37, reserve running back, the guilty party for blocking above the waist from behind. And so it is first down from the eight-yard line for Chicago, and things not going well for the hometown Bears. In this first period, they trail 10 to zip. Out of the eye formation. And whistles and flags and all kinds of things going on there to stop play as Suey looked uh, like he had a pretty good hole. But it is illegal motion, a false start charge against the Chicago Bears. So uh, they've got to get their act together here. And Vince Evans clapping his hands saying, come on, guys, relax. Let's get it back here. False start, number 65, offense, still first stop. Well, that is Noah Jackson, veteran guard. On the left side, number 65. Doug Plank has a sore left knee. He was injured early in the game. He got the start over Len Walvershide, and he may not be back. We'll have to check and see. First and 15 from the three-yard line. Suey picks his way out to the 10. Some nice running there, and also good blocking by Xanders and Neal on the right side of the Bears' offensive line. There's Okowitz taking on the block by Noah Jackson, 65, and he gets in on the tackle. Pickup of six yards will bring up second and nine from the 10. Keep walking. 
Tate and Suey. This is Matt Suey, number 26. Good hole off tackle right. Suey is wrapped up at the 15-yard line. Dexter Manley, who was not the first man in, but was the second guy there, came all the way from the right side. It was Carl Lorch, his partner on the left defensive end, who made the initial hit. Well, bright sunny skies and beautiful fall weather at Soldier Field in Chicago. We've completed one quarter of play with the visiting Redskins holding a 10 to nothing lead over the Bears. In the other direction, hoping for better things. Bashnagel is back in for Chicago. And Sevens brings them out in the eye. Suey the lead back. He has the ball. Suey is hit by the linebacker. Malott, Rich Malott from the right side and forced back and appeared to be short of the first down. A gain of only about a yard and a half. Officials are going to call for a measurement. The uh, Bears had already sent out their punting unit. It's, it's at least a half a yard short. They weren't too confident, but Vince Evans says might as well have a look. Maybe it's only a foot short. <laughs> well, maybe he made My it. My goodness. Did they yeah. get it? How about that? My wife told me I needed glasses, and I think she's right. Well, Johnny, that was one of those, uh, you know, placement of the ball numbers. I mean, he appeared to be well short, but obviously his forward progress, as detailed by the officials, uh, was a three-yard game. And so uh, even the Bears punting unit thought they were short, but they got themselves a first down. The ball is at the... 17-yard line of Chicago. Evans to throw on first down. Up the middle, complete to Marjoram. Marjoram out to the 45-yard line, but a flag is down in the Chicago backfield, and holding is the call. I think it's going to go against Keith Van Horn, the rookie right tackle. He's the one that seems to be most upset about it, as Marjoram was wide open coming across the middle which uh, Chicago Bear receivers haven't been all that open coming across the middle, but he was wide open. He caught 10 passes last year, but this one will not count, and that's a big break for the Redskins because of the fact the Bears will be back on their own nine-yard line. Illegal use of the hands, push in the face, number 78, offense, still first down. A push in the face. <laughs> I guess that's an illegal use of the hand. Maybe... <laughs> Maybe it was an accident, but nonetheless, the rookie is charged with a crime and a tough break for the Bears as they had just made their best play of the afternoon in terms of execution. But it is now first and 20 inside the 10 at the 8-yard line. Pitch up. Suey. One blocker ahead, not enough. Three Redskins are there. Olkowitz, the man to put the hit on him, and a gain of about a half a yard at most. Johnny, we have this report. And as we, well, let's see the replay first. Okay, a great play by Okowitz. He comes flying over everybody here and makes the, the tackle. Super play, and that shows uh, sideline to sideline by the middle linebacker. He's doing a heck of a job today. The word on Pat Hayden in that Rams game has suddenly and dramatically changed from a serious injury to one that appears to be far less serious. Apparently not a broken leg, not a fracture. It is now being described as a contusion. Second and 18 for the Chicago Bears here at Soldier Field. Up the middle, tips. And again, it was Olkowitz, I believe, who dove in downfield to get a hand on that ball. Or was it Malat? It was Malat. It was Malat, number 57. And you're going to see the pass come right over the middle. You're going to get a good view of this from the defender's point of view. Malat just reaches his hand up right there and knocks the ball away. It was headed for Bashnagel. And a great play by Malott. These Washington linebackers playing good football. The reason that Washington's ahead 10-0 is because of defense. Boy, I tell you, that was an outstanding play with the receiver open underneath the secondary man, Jerris White. So it is third down for the Bears. 18 to go. Blitz in their own territory. And Evans on low. First down at the 36-yard line. Delivering that ball under pressure and Ken Marker, the rookie, for making the catch. He was almost on his back when he threw that ball because the Redskins brought everybody. You're going to see Malak coming through there. You're going to see a safety blitz. And watch Evans almost, on, as he's going down, he throws the ball. Mark 
Hartron had a one-on-one -on -one situation, which you're going to have when you blitz like that, and made a super catch. So the Bears come out from the shadow of their goal line and have it at the 36-yard line of Chicago on first down. 25-yard gain. Evans to Marjoram. The Stanford rookie. First down pass. Quickly out to McClendon. McClendon uses his blocker beautifully and picks up eight yards. They're going to call a penalty. Tackle. Another flag down. They could, it could be against Noah Jackson. He was blocking on Malat as Willie McClendon was in the ball game for the first time. And Walter Payton was not. McClendon made a nice move using his blocker, Dan Neal, the center. But once more, it goes for not. Let's see who it's against. Illegal block in the back above the waist, number 65. Offense. Yeah. It was Noah Jackson. Sharp by Johnny Morris. Picked out the veteran Jackson, who's now been involved in two penalties in this past few minutes. Tampa Bay and Green Bay now tied at seven in the second period. Cincinnati and Baltimore, three to two. Is that baseball or football? <laughs> <laughs> Seattle in front of Houston, ten to seven. Kenny Stabler has passed to Ken Burrow to bring the Oilers back into that game. They were down ten to zip. Evans on first and 20 under pressure. Throws it out of bounds in the general direction of Ken Marjoram, but just unloading as he had two Redskins in hot pursuit. Lavender was the man on the coverage. Olkowitz was the man chasing Evans. Oakland, by the way, in their game, trailing 10 to nothing in the third period against Kansas City, Johnny. The Raiders have gone 10 quarters without a score. We we're talking about their offensive problems. And look at Vince Evans statistics two for 12. He had that one big play but he has two interceptions and Walter Payton was out of there again. So apparently that leg is bothering him uh, quite a bit uh, to keep Walter Payton out of a football game. Now he's back in again. Now he's back in. You can't keep him out very long. <laughs> There's an editorial comment the figment of some fans imagination. Second and 20 slot formation right Evans. Payton was open and dropped the ball. Trailing on the coverage was Rich Millat, the linebacker. It'll bring up third and long. Right now for an NFL Today report, let's go to Brent. All right, Tim, thank you so much. Here is the play-in question from the Atlanta-Los Angeles game. Wilson Farmina closing in on Pat Hayden, who's on the scramble. Hayden throws the ball. Farmina can't stop. Dives into the ankle. First report from the Ram bench. Broken left leg. We are happy to report, as you told everybody, it is not. Severe contusions. Left ankle. Back to Tim Ryan. Right, Brent. Well, of course, all football fans are pleased to hear that it's not a serious injury. You never want to see these fellas get hurt. And Pat Hayden, one of the popular players in the league. Evans up the middle. Oh, takes another big rap. Could not hold on as Jarris White plucked him. And Bashnagel has been really taking a beating out there today. But he's up and all right. And Vince Evans took a beating on that one, too. Just as he released the ball, he took a shot. So these Redskins are playing some hard-nosed football. They're hitting people out there because that pass really was on the dime. But it hadn't been for the hit by White, it would have been a completion. 12-21 remaining in the first half. The Redskins lead it 10 to nothing. And Parsons will be punting to Mike Nell, standing at the Redskin 30. Short punt, taken on the fly. Nelms is dangerous, but he is shut down. At the 45-yard line, another flag is down. Yellow is the favorite color at Chicago Soldier Field today. It is against the Chicago Bears, the preliminary signal from the referee Jorgensen. Illegal block in the back above the white waist. Number 35, receiving team. First down. It is against Washington, not the Bears. Ricky Klatt, number 35. The guilty party for the Redskins, and that's the score with 12-11 to go first half. Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris here in Chicago. Look at that penalty story. Nine thus far. Twice as many for the Bears. First down, Washington, from their own side. Joe Washington, 
Another flag, number 10 on the day. And a gain of four yards for Joe Washington. They may call Rick Walker for holding against uh, Al Harris. Possible. Atlanta leading the Rams 21 to 20 at halftime. Everybody expected that to be the dandy battle it is. Look at this, Johnny. 31 to 7. Philadelphia still the only undefeated team, aren't they? Well, Miami had a tie. Pittsburgh is 10 to 7 Holding over Cleveland at the half. Number 88, offense, still first up. Sharp by Johnny Morris, picked out the culprit again. It was Rick Walker. It is first and 20 for the Redskins from their own 25 yard line. How about Pittsburgh kind of just creeping back to their usual excellence, going after win number four in a row today? Joe Theismann is 5 of 10 for 34 yards. He needs something here, but his club is in front. Drop play. Running hard, Joe Washington picks up 11 yards to the 36 yard line of the Redskins. First man to hit him was Mike Singletary, the rookie linebacker from Baylor, along with Lenny Waltershy, number 23. Well, there, there's two teams that have been struggling somewhat, and uh, that's putting it mildly. I oh, love oh, this one. Somebody got a home run. It's five to three now in favor of Baltimore. Kansas City still shutting out Oakland, 13 to nothing. Second and nine for the Redskins. Washington cutting back beautifully, picks up six yards, pulled down from behind by Allen Page, number 82. Washington uh, running well today. He's coming off an ankle injury. Last week, Washington rushed for 30 yards and had eight catches to show that he was feeling better. And uh, told us in the elevator last night that he's 100% ready to go, and he's showing it today. And I wasn't able to get those two tickets for him. He wanted two tickets to the game. <laughs> he had some friends. I looked and looked. Wouldn't find any more tickets. Tough to get a ticket to a Chicago Bears home game. 64,000 plus sold out. 40th consecutive sellout. Third down and five. Nice. It was Jim Osborne who will get credit for it. He'll take it, but uh, <laughs> it, it goes in the stats as a regular sack, but uh, obviously Jim Osborne is not as proud of that one as he is some of his others. As you see, I don't think he trips over anybody either. He just stumbles on I his way fell, back. I thought he, there oh, he, yes, right he did. There. Yeah. It was over Joe Washington. Washington. Yeah. So a little mistiming there between the quarterback and the blocking back. Looked like Washington might have been the safety valve man on the play. Fourth down, Redskins will have to kick it. Connell just gets it away. Jeff Fisher, number 24, gets to the 34-yard line of the Chicago Bears. And Chicago will try to generate something again, a 39-yard punt with 10-19 to go in the first half. The Washington Redskins 10, the Chicago Bears are still scoreless. It was Lenny Waltershide who was the return man, and he is the injured player being helped out by Roland Harper and Bruce Heron of the Bears. And we have had uh, some guys getting banged up here today. It looks like it might be something to do with a knee. We hope not. Waltershide has been hurt earlier in the season. He had a thigh injury, so both these teams have been plagued by injuries all year. So it is first down Chicago from their own 34. Payton is the lone running back. Slot formation left. Walter Payton on right tackle and gets nine yards with some patented Payton moves. And a little bit of muscle at the finish. Mark Murphy is the one who took Walter's helmet in his belly. Oh, here's 79. Emmanuel Zanders coming out. He takes care of Dusik, 59 right there, and Payton cuts off the block. Good block by Suey, and Payton is able to get a few yards as he cuts back. Second and two for Chicago at their own 42-yard line. Pro set again with Suey joining Payton. Matt Suey and the Redskins shut it down. Dave Butts, Wilbur Young. That was enough, really. There were a couple other white shirts there, but those two big guys go 295 and 290. A lot of beef, and you're going to see 65. There's Butts. He's dumped, but he's so big there, he just jammed everything up, and it was actually Wilbur Young who really stopped the play. Good work by the Redskin defense. Loss of a yard brings up third and three. Red 
Redskins defense has been their story in this first half. Oh. Peyton hit behind the line by Young again, and then stopped at the line of scrimmage. Dexter Manley, number 72, the rookie, the man who put the final stop on Peyton, and the Bears will have to punt. And that was some outstanding work against the run by Washington. As you take a look at Neil Armstrong, Ted Marchabrota, Dick Stanfield, the Bears' offensive coaches, and uh, Neil has been under a lot of pressure. The team is one and four, and they're supposed to be contenders. If the Bears lose this one, you talk about pressure. Fourth down, Parsons will punt. Mike Nell is waiting for it at the 15 of Washington. Good punt by Parsons. At the 14, Nell is away from the first man. And finally pulled down over the 25 at about the 26-yard line. Brian Bashnagel, a man to make the tackle. 8-13 remaining in this first half. The Redskins lead it 10 to nothing here in Chicago. The drama continues in Atlanta. Trailing 21-20, back up Jeff Rutledge, pulls out, sends Drew Hill to the end zone against Atlanta, 36-yard scoring strike. Rams over the Falcons, 27-21, back now to Chicago and Tim Ryan. What a football game, Grant. Jeff Rutledge, well, you know, Pastorini might have been more fun to talk about, but Rutledge is obviously doing the job for the Rams, 27-21. What a game they got going there. It is first down here for Washington, following the Bears punt from the... 27-yard line of the Redskins. Joe Washington, he's been having a good day, and he picks up eight yards off right tackle. Gary Fensick pulled him down at the 30, to make it the 37-yard line of the Redskins. Otis Wilson on the tackle. And I saw a wide receiver throwing a good block. Art Monk was uh, blocking very well on Henderson out there, so he can block aside from catch passes and run down the field. Doug Plank is back in the game for the Bears as you look at the Redskins sideline. Washington now with 40 yards on seven carries rushing. Second and two. Ooh. Washington tackled behind the line by Alan Page. Well, a gray-haired tackle in his 14th NFL season out of Notre Dame. Comes up with a big defensive play and a Washington loss of two. Okay, take a look at number 82. Comes in behind the pulling guard. And nobody got over there to block him. And Alan Page just jumped through there and made the tackle. Third down and five. The word on Walter Scheid of the Bears, a strained knee. So it's good that Plank was able to get back in. And they're going to run short of secondary men. Third and five for Washington. Theismann has a man open. Complete for Rich Kester. First down to the Chicago Bears 41-yard line. On the coverage was number 24, Jeff Fisher, the extra defensive back in on the play. And Joe Gibbs said he's a blue chipper, and here's Caster's only practiced a couple of days, pretty good pass protection, and Theisman put up and over Todd Bell, and Caster made the grab, first down Washington. Bell it was indeed on the coverage. Fisher was the second man to get there, but it was Bell who was beaten by Rich Caster. His first big play is the Washington Redskins. First down, Redskins now in Bears territory. Joe Washington cannot get wide. He's forced out by Reuben Henderson, the rookie cornerback from San Diego State, number 20. Picked up maybe a half a yard at best. Pretty good block by number 66 there. Joe Jacoby, he got his man out of the way, didn't he? Oh, what a good story that young man is. 288-pounder out of Louisville, was signed as a free agent out of college. Didn't figure to be a starter. Didn't figure to even make the team, given an outside chance at best. Now Joe Gibbs saying, the way this guy's developed so rapidly, getting a chance to play today because of the injury to start, he could turn out to be a real good one in the NFL. Actually, a loss of a half a yard on the play. So second and a long 10. Washington going straight ahead got back about six of that. Well, the Redskins could use a nice drive by the offense. Uh, they, they score in this drive and go up 17 to nothing. Chicago Bears would be in big trouble. As you look at Washington's statistics, he has 
had a fine career. He had that stretched Achilles tendon, and he played last week. Some people thought he shouldn't have come in and played so soon, saving for this week, but maybe that little bit of playing last week helped out. He's looked sharp today, third and five. He's the lone running back. Geisman wants to throw. Deep and the pattern run by Ricky Thompson did not match up with the pass thrown by Joe Theismann, fourth down. Theismann saw the blitz coming at him, and he just dumped the ball and got rid of it to avoid the sack as the Bears blitz two men. So the Redskins, who came up with the big play to get out of their own territory and into Chicago territory, are stopped here by the Bears at the... 36 yard line. Jeff Fisher will be the return man standing at the 50 yard line as Mike Connell, the punter number 10. Jeff Fisher returned one 88 yards three weeks ago for a touchdown. Well, I gotta hope they can get this to the corner. Connell will get it into the end zone, that's for sure. So it'll be a touchback, and the Bears will start. Connell unhappy that he didn't get the angle to the corner. Looked like he didn't even try to get to the corner. Well, he's anointed himself either for not thinking or not executing one or the other. <laughs> well, the Frostbiters are out on Lake Michigan. It's got to be a little cooler out there than it is here, and it's not exactly uh, springtime in the television booth at Soldier Field. <laughs> We're in the shade. The players are in the sun. Let's see if they can generate any heat down on the field. The Bears have generated nothing thus far. They trail 10 to nothing. First and 10 from their own 20. Evans under pressure from Olkowitz to lead him. Gets the pass off. Ken Marjorie, the rookie from Stanford, uh, will be close to the first down. Indeed, it looks like he just has it. Well, Marjorie did a great job that time of adjusting on his pattern because he saw that Vince Evans was in trouble rolling out. Vince did a good job of getting the ball off that time because the Redskins really had some pressure on him. Joe Lavender on the coverage, and the Bears got the first down. Okay, now you're going to see the pressure come from the Redskins. There's Okowitz putting it on Vince Evans. Here's Marjoram at the bottom of your screen. A hook left, and then he sees Evans in trouble and gets away from Lavender, goes back the other way, and Evans does a super job of coming back against the grain, and Lavender makes the tackle. Now, uh, that's good football by both Evans and Marjoram. Open his back, single. Out of bounds at the 39-yard line of Washington, Mark Murphy. The safety from Colgate was the man beaten on the play. Bashnagel, who's been bashed around in this game, and has come up with another big one. Had two touchdowns last week, his first ever in the NFL. 30-yard game. Pretty good pass, too, wasn't it? It was a perfect pass. Evans can throw those long ones on a rope, it seems. What an arm he's got. He put on a real show in the second half last week, but the Bears were so far behind to begin with, they just couldn't catch up. Lot formation left, 424 to go in the first half. Walter Payton has nowhere to go. There are all kinds of white shirts in there to meet him. Behind the line of scrimmage, Dave Butts, linebacker Olkowitz, who's everywhere, and the man getting up who made the initial hit, number 23, the safety, Tony Peters, who blitzed up into that backfield the and made the initial hit. The run is just not working with Peyton for the Chicago Bears this year, and I think you're seeing more and more emphasis on the passing game, a shift of the emphasis on this team to the quarterback, to Evans, rather than Walter Peyton. Not that Peyton's going to, he's going to be a vital cog to this offense, but... Yeah, passing to him, right. <laughs> Second and fifth. Flags everywhere the ball has moved, so we had all kinds of action along the line ball of scrimmage. Start, quarterback number eight. And it was Vince Evans leaving without the ball that uh, brought everybody with him. And there's another, you know, a mental mistake, a miscue. Somebody didn't get the count right, what have you. I mean, these are critical errors. Both start, number eight, offense, still second down. So it brings up a five-yard penalty and makes it second and 20. So after they make the big play to bash an angle, they've now got to positively make the big play on second and 20. Three wide receivers in. Still two running backs. Williams in there. So they've got all kinds of receivers available. He's going to throw. Oops. Unloads the pass. Incomplete. Number 24, Lamar Parrish, breaking the pass up intended for Bashnagel. And Evans perilously close to the line of scrimmage when he released the ball. It brings up third down. 
pretty good play there by Parrish. Uh, he had to cover for a long time. Marcus Anderson was downfield. He was open there, but Vince just didn't quite see him in time. He had to take off and run. But uh, the Redskins are doing a good job, doing a real good job on defense. Some of the scores flashing by the Jets in front of New England. Cincinnati and Baltimore 10 to 5. That's a field goal and a safety for the Colts. Third down. Post 20 to go for the Bears at midfield. Here they come. Just got it away. It's incomplete. A flag is down, downfield. The pass intended for Marjoram. But again, Evans really having to unload, but the Bears are going to get a break here with a penalty against Washington. Lamar Parrish, evidently the guilty party. Try to bump somebody downfield. That's the call from referee Jorgensen. And so a mental error there by the Redskins because with the blitz on, they had Evans having to unload before he wanted to, and that would have been a fourth down situation. Yes, and especially when they had third and Illegal almost. Illegal contact, number 24, defense, first up. You had almost third and 20 to go, and you get a penalty like that. It's only five yards, but it gives them a first down. Let's take a look. It's Parrish on Bashnagel. Yep, right there. You can only bump him in that five-yard zone right at the line of scrimmage. If you bump him downfield, you get that call. So the Bears with a break from the Redskins. Ball at the 48-yard line of the, I make it the 43-yard line, pardon me, of the Washington Redskins and timeout call by Washington as an unhappy Lamar Parrish still complaining with 3.27 to go in the half. The Redskins lead it. Head to nothing. There's a company in Toledo, Ohio, who met Johnny Morris at Sunbathe Soldier Field as we see the big rookie, Keith Van Horn, and the veteran retread, Emmanuel Zanders, getting a second life here in Chicago after being released by New Orleans, becoming a starter ahead of Reeve Sori at right guard. The numbers on Evans, not impressive. They have a first down thanks to a red skin miscue. The ball is at the 43 of Washington. Desperately diving, trying to keep that ball inbounds. It was overthrown. The acrobatic receiver from Stanford unable to pull it in. We tried to split the zones. You had 24 and 23 covering. There's Peters and Parrish, and uh, the pass was just a little bit overthrown. Ken Marjoram, who loves, he says, the most fun thing to do is catch the spectacular one. Yeah, just like you, Johnny. <laughs> He's a great windsurfer. Have you ever windsurfed? I haven't tried that. I Looks like too much work to me. It is. It's a lot of work. Slot formation right. Williams and Peyton. Quarterback draw. And it is not Butt. Dave Butts, who almost went right by Evans, then reached back with those long arms and hauled him down. Dexter Manley, the rookie, was in there as well. And Washington defensively has really played a superb first half of football. A couple of key mistakes have helped the Bears keep drives alive and this drive alive. So now we have a third and 10 situation, another critical play for Washington not to make a mental mistake or, or whatever. Slot right again for the Bears. Three wide receivers in with two running backs. They can all catch it. And everybody's into it. Deep for Marjoram. against the offensive receiver because he turned back into into lavender now let's watch it and let's see and it is against the bears no foul on the play no the foul now, he ran a flag no back foul. and as he Four turned foul. back to go for the ball he ran right into lavender who was was uh, standing his ground so you could not call lavender for a penalty on that one well they said no foul because the ball could not be caught. My suspicion, John, is that the infraction that was signaled was going to be called on another receiver. And I believe that it was going to be called against against Joe Lavender. But uh, nonetheless, uh, brings they up fourth down. No way they could call that on Lavender. Well, they didn't call it at all, as it turned out. But it is fourth down, and the Bears will have to punt. Parsons angling for the corner. This looks like a beauty, but it's into the end zone. 
So Washington will start from their own 20, and we're down to 224 remaining in this first half of play with the Bears yet to get on the scoreboard, and Joe Theismann gets the word from Joe Gibbs, and Washington will start offensively. Look at this football game. Atlanta 28 to 27 in the third period. Steve Bartkowski to Alfred Jackson scoring for Atlanta. Fans are getting their money's worth at Atlanta today. Look at Cincinnati now leads 17 to 5 and it's uh, I didn't get a chance to look at that Houston score. All right it is first down for Washington out of the eye formation this time Joe Washington picks up about four yards. Off left tackle, Lee Coons, Todd Bell in on the hit. Good block on that left side by Saul and Mark May, the rookie number one pick from Pittsburgh. There's one thing for sure in this game, the Washington offense has not moved the ball as it has in past games, despite the fact that they lose. They've been able to move the ball up and down the field. So far, they have not done that today as Joe Theismann goes off the field to get some instructions. I want to give the correction that the right guard in there, who made the left guard, pardon me, was Russ Grimm, number 68, on that last play. We've got a timeout on the field. The preceding message was furnished by the National Football League. Tim Bryant and Johnny Morris here in Chicago at the two-minute warning. There's Lenny Waldershine being taken to the Bears' locker room. First, uh, pardon me, second down as we return with second and seven for the Redskins. Joe Washington cutting it back against the grain and wrapped up after a gain of about three yards. The linebacker Gary Campbell on the hit. Now for an NFL Today report, let's go to Brent Musburger again in New York. Tim Ryan, it's as good as advertised. Here come the Atlanta Falcons, right back at the Los Angeles Rams. Bartkowski to Jackson, 8 yards, 28-27. We'll have all the updates at halftime. Back now to Tim Ryan. Oh, boy, that is it. We got another injury out here in Chicago, looks like. Jim Osborne getting some attention. This has been a hard-hitting football game. It has not provided anywhere near the offensive excitement of that Rams-Atlanta game, however. Indeed, the only touchdown was scored by the Redskins defense. Neil Olkowitz intercepting Vince Evans' pass and taking it in for the score from 10 yards out. That's Freddie Cato, the trainer, and Dr. Fossier, the team physician, as Jim Osborne, one of the I Man has been around for quite a while with the Chicago Bears. I believe this is his ninth year with Chicago. These two teams, uh, over the years, the Bears have won 18, the Redskins 10. The Bears have won four of the last five between these two teams, and a couple of key ones that kept the, the Redskins out of the playoffs in the late 70s. 18 and 10, did you say? Imagine that, that number of uh, games. What a great rivalry. Third down and three. Neil Armstrong on the sidelines cannot be a happy man. Joe Gibbs can't be happy either, except for the score in this one, but uh, he's looking for win number one in his first year. Armstrong's been here a while for the team that was supposed to be a contender. Blitz. Heisman has the time. They picked it up well. He gets it to Walker complete, but not much of a gain, only about a yard. And he was dropped immediately by Todd Bell, a rookie from Ohio State. Rick Walker, number 88, five-year man from UCLA. So the Bears did the job defensively on the Redskins on that series. And they have called timeout with 1.28 to play in the half. And a fourth down coming up for Washington. Bears have one timeout left following this one. Try and get that ball and make something happen before the half comes to a close. Philadelphia leading New Orleans 31 to 7 in their game and uh, evidently Dave Wilson has come in for Archie Manning. There was some talk that the rookie might get the start. Manning trying to get back from an injury evidently started that game. And Wilson has come in for Manning as the Eagles have jumped into a big lead. No gives. Former architect of the San Diego offense uh, here with the Washington Redskins. When the Bears get the ball, they'll have a chance for a drive. Vince Evans so far is four for 19 for 81 yards. Those are not good statistics. 
Nope. And I think he's he has had a couple of drops, at least a couple of balls that I thought should have been dropped, but uh, he hasn't thrown well either. Connell gets the punt away to Fisher at his own 27. And the ball is bubbled, I believe, recovered by the Bears. Right on the play, number 58. Dave Graff, reserve linebacker, but the Chicago Bears managed to come up with the ball. Here's Fisher. I think it was Bashnagel, 84, that might have recovered it. Look to the right of your screen, and it, I think 84 is on the bottom of that pile. Bashnagel, who does a good job on special teams, aside from being a steady wide receiver. And right on top of him was Graff, but Bashnagel managed to hold on. So it is first down for Chicago from their own 28 yard line 116 on the clock this Marcus Anderson has tons of speed number 88 for the Bears Evans looking yellow And he was throwing to Walter Payton, and Butts grabbed that ball like a wide receiver. There's 295 pounds of romp and stomp and dynamite heading for that goal line, and 270 pounds of Dan Neal grabs him by the neck and downs him. He was down. The ball scooted loose. It's first down for Washington. Boy, you know, he almost had to cheer for the big guy to get it in, no matter what your perspective on the game was. Those big guys don't get to do it too often. John Riggins is stopped. Great goal line effort by the Bears on that play. They stopped the big man from the one-yard line. 57 and ticking here at the end of the first half. The third interception of the day by the Washington Redskins. And Dave Butts was one yard from glory. There's 46 seconds left in the game. What do you think was going through Butts' mind as he, every stride he got closer and closer to that goal line? I bet it seemed farther and farther. <laughs> And Dan Neal did a great job catching him from behind. So it is second and goal. Riggins again, and he is in. Touchdown, Washington Redskins. And their defense has done it in this first half. And Chicago Bear fans are rooting for the Washington Redskins. This is kind of a derisive move or measure that they have done a few times this season. And I think we should say the score is Washington defense 16, Chicago Bears nothing because the defense has set up everything. Sure has. On the butts interception, no question that Evans was again pressured, wound up throwing back against the grain under heat. Timeout is called by the Redskins with 25 seconds to play in this first half. He was under pressure, but again did not deliver the ball with uh, the Redskins defenders strung out that way. And, you know, they've been talking about, as you look at John Riggins, who is about to go over 7,000 yards for his career, that's not too bad. Uh, only nine men have done that. Uh, as you can see coming up at halftime, Brent Nerv with scores and highlights as we're going to look at the extra point right now. Jack Whitaker's Legends of the Game, today featuring Lance Allward. That ought to be fun. What a great receiver he was. Mark Mosley's point after try is good. No flags are down, we're happy to report. And we still have 25 seconds of football remaining in the first half of play, but the Redskins have now jumped into a commanding 17 to nothing lead. And both the major scores set up uh, Redskin interceptions, one by Joe, uh, or rather Joe Lavender setting up the Mosley field goal, and Olkowitz taking in an interception for a score. And then Dave Butts' interception setting up the one yard run by John Reagan. So it has been quite a defensive afternoon for Joe Gibbs team. Interestingly enough the Bears are trying to utilize Peyton as a receiver more today and both of those two big interceptions were passes that were attempted to be thrown to Walter Peyton. And one as of the, you saw there's a lot of traffic around him. One of the problems that Evans has not had so far in five games coming into today was interceptions. He had only three a modest figure but he has doubled it with three in the first half here today. And there is Neil Armstrong. Uh, you got to wonder what's going through his mind. Uh, the last couple of weeks has been talk about 
his job and uh, if this continues this way and it's 17 to nothing right now there's going to be a, a hot time in Chicago next week. Dave Williams the deep man Mike Connell the punter will again kick it off. 25 seconds remaining in the first half. Well the Redskins have had their woes and they're ready for better things so far things are going well. That was Leslie Frazier reserve defensive back number 21 returning it to the 32 yard line met there by Jarris White. And Booz greet the Chicago offense as it comes on the field here at Soldier Field. It'll be first down at the 33 yard line for the Bears. We should reiterate for Washington fans that the Chicago Bears allow their quarterback to call his own plays. Evans calls his plays. Nothing sent in. No signals in. It's a Vince Evans game call. Lots of time for Evans, and it is complete to Brian Bashnagel for a Bears first down at the 47-yard line. Jarris White on the coverage. In the things could get worse category, Johnny, Kansas City now leads Oakland in the fourth period, 27 to nothing. Here is Bashnagel down the field, down and out. Pretty tough to stop this pattern, especially when you're playing loose. There's only a few seconds left in the half. You got to give the receiver that kind of a, a pattern. 14 seconds on the clock. Pump fake. Deep downfield for Bashnagel. Intercepted by Mark Murphy. They better get him, Marty. They could set up a field goal. The Murphy clock is <laughs> out of bounds at the 45-yard line as the clock has ticked to zero. He used up 14 seconds getting across field. And a torrent of booze sends the Bears to the locker room at halftime here at Soldier Field where the Redskins lead it 17 to nothing. Across, the Chicago Bears are pathetic. There is no excuse for the way they have been playing this year. Two years ago, this team was in the playoffs. They have gone downhill ever since. It is one bad play after another, like this one that we're going to show you right here. Vince Evans calls his own plays. But this time, he sort of thought about it before he threw the ball to Dave Butts. Now, when you first look at this play, you had to think maybe the big Washington lineman fumble, but I'm not so sure. How would you call it? I call it the play properly. He's down. Now, watch. He's hit here by Neal. His knee's down, now the ball comes out. It's not a fumble. No city in the country is as loyal to its football team as Chicago is to the Bears. And again, there is no excuse. They're playing like a team without any heart today. All right, let's take you to the scoreboard and get you up to date now. The Philadelphia Eagles. Now, there's a football team with character. Dick Vermeil, tough Monday night game, comes back. Let me show you how this game began. The New Orleans Saints take the opening kickoff. And Irv, what about this guy, Wayne Wilson, here? Well, I say, Wayne Wilson does a good job on his kickoff return, but I can tell you this, Dick Vermeil exploded and hit the roof of the Superdome because he takes great pride in having his special teams hold people inside the 20. He goes 57 yards. Let me show you what Irv means. George Rogers burned the Eagles. It was 7-0. And Vermeil says, let's get on it. And the next drive, Jaworski, Krepfley, and we're all tied. And how about this guy, Booker Russell? Never heard of him. You gotta like him. Of course, he was signed as a free agent by the Oakland Raiders, dropped, picked up by San Diego as no, a free agent, dropped, and now the Eagles have him. Good inside power runner. When things go bad for the Eagles, as they did here, fumble the snap, they still come up. Reggie Rook said, I've got to get free, and he broke out. He knows what to do in that sequence. It's a well-coached football team. Look at him on defense. Coming in here, swarming on Archie Manning. That's the difference in that league, folks. Guys like Frank LeMaster aren't any better than the players on the Chicago Bears or the Washington Redskins. It's how bad you want it, right? Okay, let's let me get you up to date now on some AFC scores. The New York Jets over New England, 28-21. The Patriots are trying to come back now. Richard Todd has thrown three touchdown passes in that game against the Patriot defense. Pittsburgh over Cleveland, 10-7 is the count there. Bradshaw goes to Stallworth for the Steelers' only touchdown. This is the game of the day. Atlanta now leading the Rams, 35 to 27. What a shootout this has been. Let me show you exactly what has happened. Here comes John James to Leroy Irvin, Irv. Leroy Irvin has been very busy in this game, not only returning kicks, but playing in the secondary two for an injured Pat Thomas. Here he takes this punt return, 75 yards for a score, and it looked as though it was gonna be the Rams' day. Now, in the pregame show on CBS, Bud Carson, Ram assistant, said best fullback in the league is William Andrews. A lot of people say, what's he talking about? 
we show you what he's talking about. 25 yards for a touchdown here by Andrews. He just scored a short time ago on a one-yard burst. Frank Corral has trouble with the snap. Says, I can't get this punt off. Maybe I can complete a pass. Batted down by the Atlanta special team, and that set up a scoring sequence and a great tight end that you love, Junior Miller. Sure do. Jimmy Ray, who's the receiver coach for Atlanta, says Jim Junior Miller can be the best tight end in football. And oh, a host of outside weapons. Here comes Alfred Jenkins, 23 yards. This put the Falcons up 21-13. Then the controversial play of the day. Wilson Fomwina coming at Pat Hayden, hit him, but he committed himself. It was not a late hit, but he really tore up Hayden's ankle. At first, they said it was broken. Then they came back and said, only contusion. Hayden completed that pass when he was going down. Jeff Rutledge completed the pass to Childs, which meant the score. It was 21-20. Rams were down, then Rutledge got him ahead when he went to Drew Hill. 36 yards in the score here. And then it was Steve Bartkowski again. Remember, he's playing with a broken ribs. Over the middle to Alfred Jackson. And there's Pat Hayden limping, again not broken, just bad contusions. We are so happy to report that that was not a broken leg, as we first said. All right, in the AFC, Cincinnati 17, Baltimore 5. They are now in the third quarter of that game. Tampa Bay and Green Bay, they're on a tough game in the NFC Central Division. The Packers with a lot of weapons. They scored initially on this burst by Gary Ellis. The thing I like about this play, Brent, is you see how the offensive line opened the hole. They were all beat up a couple of weeks ago. Apparently, they're now healthy, doing well. Now, here's a guy who I criticized a few weeks ago, and he's just been coming back. Doug Williams, right there to Jimmy Giles. Now watch him go to Giles for a touchdown. That tied it, and just a moment ago, I get word that the Buccaneers have scored again, 14-7 now. They lead the Green Bay Packers in that game unfolding before a sellout crowd in Lambeau Field. You're not going to believe this score. As Tim Ryan said, things can only get worse. The Chiefs over the Raiders, 27-0. Jim Plunkett is out. Mark Wilson is on the field. Next week, many of you will get a chance to see the Raiders in action. Our doubleheader game against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Hard to believe, isn't it? All right, Houston now against Seattle. And the Oilers lead at 14-10. And Stabler went 31 yards to Burrow for one of the Oilers' touchdowns. The game you're watching, and again, it is hard to believe, but for the Washington Redskins, that's a team that should not have been 0-5 either. They got better talent. They got a chance to win for the first time this year. And the NFL Today continues on CBS after these messages from your local stations. Tonight at Archie Bunker's place, is it romance for Archie's niece and accountant? Wouldn't it be wonderful if they fell in love? No. And on the season premiere of One Day at a Time, when Alex moves in with Ann and Barbara, can they survive? Then on Alice, can Vera break the world's tap dancing record with help from Donald O'Connor? And on the Jeffersons, George comes up with a scheme to get the kids talking again. Huh? What? On Trapper John, an addicted newborn leads to a discovery. This is what we call a black market baby ring. Five all-new episodes coming your way tonight. This is CBS. Here comes precious cargo. Today, when every dollar counts, you can protect your new car dollar by investing in the new Datsun 210 hatchback. Outstanding gas mileage is only one big bonus. A skyroof is available, and you get a split fold down rear seat and a solid steel unibody. All riding on radial tires. The Datsun 210, a lot of car, not a lot of money. Drive a Datsun for all it's worth. Complicated fastening jobs are really quite simple with the Pop Brand Rivet Tool. A Pop Brand Rivet quickly replaces a stripped screw, won't shake loose like a nut and bolt, and fastens from one side on metals and leathers. So don't put off tough fastening jobs I fixed it. until it's too late. Simply put it all together with the Pop Brand Rivet Tool from the Bostic Consumer Division. The shell dealer just gave me this good-looking football print for free. They're giving away six different Chicago Bear prints in all. This week, it's Walter Payton. You just go into any shell station and pick one up. You don't even have to buy anything. Oh, come on, man. Why would anybody want a picture of this guy? Why? Well, if you knew anything about football, you would know why. These armchair quarterbacks, they're all alike. What's this? Gonna go out and play a little game of touch this afternoon? <laughs> you know, that's Bradshaw's number. This week, Walter Payton, not Terry Bradshaw. A salute to Jack Rickhouse tomorrow on Noonbreak. Welcome back to the news desk in New York. Let me turn back a page at the old history book right now because I want to tell you about a player who's been out of the game almost a decade.
But those of you who are lucky enough to see him will never forget his grace. If you weren't one of those fans, you may not believe your eyes as you watch Jack Whitaker's Legends of the Game. In the old days of the American Football League, this renovated area behind me was known as Balboa Stadium, and it was the home of the San Diego Chargers. Today's Chargers have the most prolific passing game in football. But the men that played here, they like to throw it a lot, too. And you could always count on one man to catch it. The incomparable Lance Allworth. He ran like a deer, and his nickname was Bambi. He stood barely six feet tall, and he weighed only 180 pounds. But he was the most exciting pass catcher of the 60s. Never before had a receiver with such blinding speed owned such a skillful pair of hands. In the history of the game, I don't believe uh, a football has ever seen a young man that could run and leap and jump and have the combinations of, a combination of speed and hands as uh, did Lance Allworth. The combination of speed, being able to leap, and, uh, and great, great hands. In 1962, Allworth shocked the football world. Drafted by San Francisco, Allworth instead joined the San Diego Chargers of the brand new American Football League. Why did you pick uh, the AFL and the Chargers over the NFL? Well, believe it or not, it wasn't really a hard choice for me. We didn't have any teams uh, from the NFL down south. I didn't follow professional football because I never felt like I'd be big enough to play. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like most guys. Uh, the AFL and the Chargers over the NFL. Well, believe it or not, it wasn't really a hard choice for me. We didn't have any teams uh, from the NFL down south. I didn't follow professional football because I never felt like I'd be big enough to play, mm -hmm. <laughs> like most guys my size. So uh, I really just want to be with people that I liked. Harold Reed was most fortunate to sign Lance Allworth for the San Diego Chargers. I have a dream that someday I would have a stadium with 100, 200, 300,000 seats. That those seats would be filled with all of those fans, those great fans, who watched the American football games in the early 60s in those nostalgic little stadiums. Lance Allworth, you will be their standard bearer, the first American Football League player enshrined in the hall. And so, as the roar of the crowd in my dream stadium becomes thunderous, I can hear the PA announcer saying, number 19, in his finest hour, Hall of Famer, Lance Olwyn. He was a great receiver. Irv, you must have defended against him. I did defend against him. You know, and you know when a Hall of Famer is on his way, and I, in the early 60s and late 60s, defended against Lance. He had tremendous jumping ability and blue fingers. All right. He used stick up. <laughs> no, he didn't. <laughs> All right. Let's send you back to the stadium now in the game you're enjoying on CBS. Well, the skies are bright, but things aren't so bright for the hometown Chicago Bears. The Redskins lead at 17 to nothing at Soldier Field in Chicago. The breeze blowing off Lake Michigan as usual. Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris here. And uh, Johnny, uh, an entirely defensive display in that first half and all of that done by the Washington Redskins uh, leading to and accounting directly for, in one case, all of the points. They have been super. Here's Okowitz's touchdown. And watch the Bear offensive linemen as they're out there. They're looking back here to see if he has caught the ball rather than throwing the blocks downfield. Okowitz goes in for the touchdown. This was a key play that put Washington up 10 to nothing. And then here's an ill-advised pass by Vince Evans out here in the flat. He's looking for Walter Payton, but 65 goes out there, and he drilled the pass rather than trying to throw it up and over. And big butts, Dave Butts, goes down the field, carrying it one arm, just like the backs do. Dan Neal made the tackle right before he got into the end zone, but John Riggins took it in for the touchdown. Washington leads, or I should say the Washington defense primarily leads by a score of 17 to nothing here at the half. Well, the crowd has certainly uh, come out strongly uh, against their hometown team. They booed them when they left the field. They booed them when they returned. And this team is uh, really going to have to reach back for something extra in the second half just to get the fans on their side, get some points on the board. We'll be back at Soldier Field in a moment. We want to make you smile. Welcome back. I see you brought a friend. My boss hasn't smiled the whole trip. Mm, I'm back. I think you'll like our beds. Mm, big room. 
Everything all right? Just fine. Call me for dinner. In an hour. We made him smile. Come to Holiday Inn where your smile sits. We're number one people pleasing. Throughout history, we've created sounds to call out over vast distances. Now, Zenith System 3 introduces the only television that's also a telephone. With Advanced Space Phone, you can take or make calls anywhere in the world, right through your set. Hello, London speaking. No other TV set can make that call. System 3 from Zenith. The quality goes in before the name goes on. Touch. Now Canon gives it a new meaning with the One Touch, the Canon NP120 copier. There isn't even a power switch. Just touch and copying begins instantly. You get 12 copies a minute on plain paper without wasted time or energy. The low-cost Canon NP120, the One Touch. Turning it off is even simpler. No touch. Call toll-free for information or contact your Canon dealer. Football League is sponsored by Cadillac and your Cadillac dealer. Merrill Lynch, a breed of heart. And by AC Delco General Motors Corporation. Over 50 years of quality automotive replacement components. John Rovetta will kick it off for the Bears. First time we've mentioned his name today. It's the first action he has had. And the wind has blown the ball off the tee. Rovetto number nine replaced Hans Nielsen after he missed the field goal last week against Minnesota. Bob Thomas, a regular and very consistent kicker for the Bears, still out with an injury. And Rovetto from southwest Louisiana, acquired as a free agent from Tampa after being cut by the Bucks earlier in the season, getting his chance to get some action here today. So Rovetto kicks it off for Chicago, Washington to our right. It is Nelms in the end zone, and he's going to bring it out, stumbling. And gets just to the 20-yard line. There he is pulled down from behind by Bruce Heron, number 51. And so the Redskins will start offensively here as we look at the statistics, and uh, they are interesting, as the Redskins' stats have been right from the start of the season. Total yards is fairly close, 128 to 121 in favor of Washington. But the turnovers, Vince Evans has four interceptions. Joe Theismann has not been spectacular, but he stayed away from a critical mistake, no interceptions. Okay, so it is first down for the Redskins who have not done much offensively, but haven't had to thus far. Riggins bulls his way straight ahead for a gain of about five yards on the play. Number 44, longtime Jet star, set out a season of football there is Joe Theismann. And Theismann, seven out of 13 for 60, respectable stats. And he has been uh, respectable since the season began, although he did have nine interceptions coming into today's game. Joe Washington. Washington gets over the 25 to the 26 for a gain of about two. And pushed out by Lee Coons, the middle linebacker, number 57. Third down, Washington. Well, maybe this will be some kind of a turnaround for the Washington Redskins. Uh, Joe Theismann has taken his lumps to Washington Press. Uh, gosh, he had great hopes for this season. Um, now the, the Redskins don't want to extend his contract right now and he gets booed and things are said in the press and I know he'd like to have a good game and maybe try and turn things around psychologically for this team. Joe Washington in motion. Quick pass to the tight end Warren complete to the 30 yard line just short of the first down it appeared to me Gary Fensick number 45 for the hit on him. It's going to be very, very close. It looks like it still might be a touch short but they gave his forward progress up beyond the 30 yard line. Doug Plank and Len Walterscheid are both out, supposedly, for the rest of this football game, and that would be a big blow for the Bears. We see Plank on the sideline with one sock roll down on his left leg. No sign of Walterscheid, however, who was taken to the locker room. It's very close. There's Plank on the Chicago He's sideline. got it. He's got it. First down. Well, there was your old forward uh, progress marking coming into play there again by the officials. 
We've seen a couple of those very close ones that appeared to not be there that turned out to be there. So it is first down for the Redskins. And Atlanta's got in front of the Rams, 35 to 27. Might pay to watch that game. Riggins, bowling straight ahead. Gets about three yards on muscle effort. Hampton was in on the hit. Coons and Gary Campbell, the linebackers, the initial contact. Joe Theismann was seven for 13 for 60 yards in the first half with no interceptions. Riggins, 24 yards rushing on seven carries. who has been uh, by far their best offensive weapon. And the Bears went into a three-man front, a 3-4 at that time as Washington eluded Jim Osborne, then cut back on Fensick and broke the tackle by Gary Fensick, turned on the speed. Todd Bell, 25, comes up from the backside with, with Terry Schmidt also in on the tackle. But the Redskins are now deep in Chicago territory. It's a 32 and a half, and you talk about an important drive. You think, well, it can't be too important. You're up 17-0. If they score here, they could put them away at 24-0. 83 yards rushing for Joe Washington. In motion goes Otis Wansley. Theismann runs it, goes out of bounds for very little, if any, gain. Well, obviously, things didn't go right on that play. A broken play, and Theismann ended up getting himself a few yards out of it. He's got quick feet. Theismann is a quick man for setting up and a quick man when something goes wrong, he has those quick feet that he can make something out of it. About a yard and a half for Joe Theismann to the 30-yard, 30 31-yard line of the Bears. Look at that. Kansas City shutting out Oakland. 27 to nothing. The Super Bowl champs in trouble. Philadelphia doing a number on New Orleans. And the Eagles will remain unbeaten. Joe Washington on the little flare pass. Gets over the 30-yard line. Chased out by Gary Fensick. And we're being up third down and about seven to go for the Redskins. Bears send in Fisher and Bruce Heron. Out come Otis Wilson and Lee Coons. Three quarterbacks have been hurt in the NFL today. Pat Hayden, Archie Manning, and now Brian Sipes suffered a concussion in the Cleveland game has been replaced by Paul McConnell. They haven't thrown to Ricky Thompson much at all today, have they? Roll out, Feisman, deep side left. Throwing to Ricky Thompson this time. You see, Fensick is playing freeze, watching Theismann and heads over to the zone there. Ricky Thompson thought he had a one on one situation, and Fensick just went to the spot, made the interception. Henderson was covering Thompson. First down, Chicago, as Gary Fensick having another fine game. 17 to nothing. Redskins early in the third period. Seems it's always been like this. The last car in the lot has been yours. And now all that hard work and all those long hours have paid off in recognition, in financial success, and in the way you reward yourself. Isn't it time you owned a Cadillac? After all, who deserves one more than you? Picking and choosing the right investments requires very careful handling. One wrong move can easily damage the best laid plans. At Merrill Lynch, we know that size and strength can be very valuable. But it is our sensitivity to your investment goals and agility in helping you reach them that makes us what we are. Merrill Lynch, a breed apart. 
Mac Davis and Barbara Mandrell welcome Dolly Parton, Emmy Lou Harris, and Mickey Gilly to the Country Music Awards Monday at 9.30, 8.30 Central in Mountain. Gary Fensick, the Yale graduate who attended Barrington High School here in the Chicago area. He's the man who intercepted Joe Namath's last pass in the NFL, Gary Fensick. First interception of Joe Theismann today brings his total to 10 on the season. Bears blunting the Redskin drive at first down. Evans, man open is Marjorie, cutting it back to the middle, has a first down at the 33-yard line of the Chicago Bears, and it's Lamar Parrish pulling him down. Number 24, Marjoram showing those good moves and obviously fine hands, the youngster from Stanford. If this year's history repeats itself, Vince Evans usually comes out in the second half and is, has the hot hand. He's done that almost every game so far this year, and Ken Marjoram has had a hot hand for the last couple of games since he got his first start last week with 10 pass receptions. Well, you can't give away 17 points and hope to win it in 30 minutes of football. Suey digging straight ahead, picks up about five. It'll be second down at five for the Bears. There's Neil Okowitz. Doesn't get in on this play. He's taken out, fill in the hole, and they got a few yards. The Rams have scored on a punt return, 84 yards by Leroy Irving, and it is now Atlanta 35, the Rams 34. That Wondrous Walter. Maybe a yard gain on the play. As Peyton comes out of the ball game, every time he gets the ball now, it seems like there's three or four defenders right there. They're going right for Walter Peyton. Now they're in a third down situation. He is out of the game, so obviously he's not 100% because of, because of the leg. And they have uh, Dave Williams has come in along with Suey in the backfield. And this man at the bottom of your screen, Marcus Anderson, has tremendous speed. Number 57, Rich Millot, getting a hand on that ball, intended for Dave Williams coming out of the backfield. We almost had another touchdown down the sideline. Millot came very close to intercepting that, and that would have been a touchdown because there was nobody that could have stopped him. It's Vince Evans having a terrible day so far. Final score, Philadelphia 31, New Orleans 14, and the Eagles remain unbeaten. Tampa leading Green Bay. 21 to 7 at Green Bay. Parsons to punt here in Chicago. Off the side of his foot, but it gets a Chicago bounce. Nelms from his 19. Nelms to the 30th pull down. John Skabinski, number 30, who was just activated by the Chicago Bears, a fullback and a great man to have on the specialty teams. 44-yard punt with the Bears bounce. Washington leads it 17 to nothing, and they have the ball. Unfiring, cold cranking, dirt fighting, road handling, money saving, hard working AC Delco. You know, dirt can do more damage in there than it does out here. That's why it makes real good sense to use AC, oil and air filters, because they're one hard-working solution to internal pollution. Hot firing, cold cranking, dirt fighting, road handling, money saving, hard working AC Delco. Instead of moving down to get better mileage, maybe you should move up to Cadillac, a 1982 V8 diesel-powered Cadillac, a Fleetwood Brougham, or a DeVille, an Eldorado, or a Seville. You don't have to give up room and comfort like this to get good mileage. The V8 diesel-powered Cadillacs. Whichever model you choose. Best of all, it's a Cadillac. Leroy Irvin is having one of the finest days a return man has ever had in the National Football League. He has scored two touchdowns, a 75-yarder earlier that put the Rams ahead of the Falcons. Then, this 84-yarder, just moments ago, he almost broke another one, getting the Rams down inside midfield, where now they've got an opportunity to pull it out against the Falcons. It's 35-34, Falcons lead, midway, fourth period. Back to Tim Ryan. 
All right, Brent. I tell you, there's a lot more going on in that game than there is here. I, I have to say that that's one uh, that anybody in the NFL would like to be watching today. But right here, we've got the Redskins 17 to zip on the Bears, and we'll keep you up to date on that Rams Falcons game. Heisman is hit just as he released the ball, and it was Gary Campbell with Dan Hampton putting the heat on him. The pass, of course, went incomplete. Second and ten for the Redskins. There's Joe Theismann. The old Notre Damer. Yep, went up to the Canadian Football League after being drafted by Miami. Did well up there on that wide field and his running ability. And he always wanted to play down here, and he's proven he can. <laughs> What's happening to your old fighting Irish these days? Gosh, Johnny, what can I say? <laughs> I brought up a bad subject for you, didn't I? Joe Tyson must be as happy about that as I am. Joe Washington, nowhere to go. The Bears shut it down at the line of scrimmage. Well, Lee Koontz was in on that tackle. Washington really got crunched both ways uh, as 57 Lee Koontz was in on the tackle. Alan Page at the bottom. Allen starting his, I believe, 208th consecutive game for the Chicago Bears. That's a lot of years. So it is third down with the ball at the 31 of Washington. The Redskins have not been able to generate any more offense than the Bears have, but they're on top, 17 to nothing, thanks to some sparkling defensive play in the first half. Lots of time. Theisman, man open, Caster. Caster stepped out of bounds as he caught the ball. A little unhappy that he didn't get more upfield as he saw that he had running room, but he was already on the sideline. So it'll be fourth down. He just didn't realize that he was so close to the sidelines because he was wide open. There was actually nobody on the coverage. As he turned around, he, he just was too close to that sidelines and out of bounds. The Redskins will have to punt. Standing at his 20, Jeff Fisher waiting for it at the Bears 28. Fair catch signaled by Fisher at the 30 yard line of the Chicago Bears, so they'll be starting from fairly good field position when play resumes here at Chicago Soldier Field with 9 12 remaining in the third period. Washington leads it 17 to nothing. That an amplified human voice could shatter a glass is remarkable. That a cassette recording of that voice can shatter a glass is amazing. But after 1,000 plays, can the same cassette still shatter a glass? It can if it's totally new Memorex. Now even after 1,000 plays, reproduction so true, we ask, is it live or is it Memorex? Seems it's always been like this. The last car in the lot has been yours. And now all that hard work and all those long hours have paid off in recognition, in financial success, and in the way you reward yourself. Isn't it time you owned a Cadillac? After all, who deserves one more than you? as we see the winds from Lake Michigan in action on the flags here at Soldier Field. And the Honey Bears, uh, they got great spirit. Boy, they just battle in there right to the end down along the sidelines. <laughs> 9-12 to go, third period. Bears first down at their own 30-yard line. Willie McClendon is now in for Walter Payton. Evans on first down, incomplete intended for Marjoram. Had some time to throw there, but rushed a little bit anyway and that's uh, what happens I guess inevitably when the heat's been on you most of the way Kenny that, Marjoram the man that uh, they're really excited about properly so here in Chicago he was well covered by Lamar Parrish on that play as McClendon comes back out last week Evans was 26 for 43 today he is 6 for 25 Walter Payton Five carries, five yards when he left the game. Evans deep, his man is open. Dave Williams, and he just didn't get his hands on the football. 
ball. It looked like he misjudged the ball. He was out and open, and the ball seemed to be far enough. It seems like he might have lost it momentarily. The Redskins tried to crisscross. No real pass rush that time, and the ball is there. He has to go inside a little bit more. And boy, it hit him right on the edge of the hands there. Very close. But it looked like he lost it for a second. That's in the should have had it category. Yes, it is. He dropped a big one for him a few weeks ago, too. Third down and 10. Bashnagel wide left. Marjoram wide right. Slot left. Make it uh, Marcus Anderson wide right. Anderson incomplete intended for Bashnagel. Mark Murphy had him covered. The pass not on the mark. And the cascade of booze for young Vince Evans. As he leaves the field and the Bears have a fourth down. And Neil Armstrong, uh, of course, may have a decision to make whether he would want to change quarterbacks. But Vince is a young quarterback who he feels that the future of the Bears is with. And he'll probably want to have him go through the, all the trials and tribulations rather than go with Phipps or Avellini. Parsons punt taken by Nelms, and Nelms gets some running room up over the 45. Some loose tackling there as the wind has definitely gone out of the sails of the Bears here. Brian Cabral, reserve linebacker, made the tackle on the play. Washington with good field position at their own 46 when we return. Instead of moving down to get better mileage, maybe you should move up to Cadillac. A 1982 V8 diesel-powered Cadillac, a Fleetwood Brougham, or a DeVille, an Eldorado, or a Seville. You don't have to give up room and comfort like this to get good mileage. The V8 diesel-powered Cadillacs, whichever model you choose. Best of all, it's a Cadillac. This Bud's for that first day on the job. Yeah, just for you, that distinctively clean, crisp taste that says Budweiser. For all you do. This Bud's for you. Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris at Soldier Field in bright sunshine. The Washington Redskins have first down at their own 46 with 8.44 remaining in this period. Joe Washington has had himself a fine afternoon. 84 yards on 14 carries, plus what he just gained there. Another six, we'll call it, second and four over the midfield strike. Todd Bell, the rookie from Ohio State, made the tackle. Singletary comes in to be the extra linebacker. Alan Page comes out. Second and a long five. Theismann, 11 for 19, 72 yards. Not a lot of yardage, but he's been very effective thus far one interception neither team has really done much offensively <laughs> Joe Washington rolls for about four yards Osborne Otis Wilson in on the hit Singletary got a piece of him off the eye formation he just picks his way through there and manages to get himself a few yards a Singletary catches him from behind for the Chicago Bears you know we haven't seen all that much of Metcalf today have we no, only been in on a few plays. Washington, of course, uh, the starter at that position has been doing real well. And Caster's in there again. It is third down and two for the Redskins. Riggins, he's got room. Riggins has the first down at the 40-yard line. He's tripped up by Fensick. He had a good block out on that left side. Good heads up running by Riggins, who used to run a 9-800. He still has fair speed, but he's much older now. But he noticed the uh, open spaces to the outside, dipped outside, and uh, showed a little power there. A man who rushed for more yards at Kansas than Gale Sayers did. That's saying something. Sure is. An outstanding running back in the National Football League as many years with the Jets. Tenth year in the NFL. Slot formation left. Monk in the slot. Ricky Thompson wide left. Thompson, incomplete, just overthrown. Bears had 
good coverage on it. Reuben Henderson, the rookie, was stride for stride with Thompson. So Washington trying to loosen things up, have a little fun out here offensively. The handoff to Riggins and right back, and you're going to see Henderson going stride for stride as the Bears didn't fall for it. First down play, if you're going to call it, it's a good time to call it. And it was just a little bit overthrown. Thompson did have a slight step, but it would have had to have been a perfect pass. Second and 10 from the Bears 40. Washington in control. Ricky Thompson wide right. Monk split to the left. There you go. chance to catch the ball so there'll be no question of uh, intentional grounding even if that was in Joe's mind he threw it at a receiver and Rick Walker had a chance to catch it good pursuit by Otis Wilson you have to call it a heads up play by Theismann to be able to spot Walker here they come here comes Otis Wilson 55 now watch for 88 you see 88 right there Walker and Theismann saw him and the ball was uh, at his uh, at his feet so you can't call that would have been better for Walker to not catch the ball because he would have fallen down and taken a loss on the play. It is third and ten. Redskins have not been able to penetrate into Bears territory. Here's an open man. That was Virgil Say, wide receiver from Troy State, who did not see the ball in the air soon enough. He was open and the ball was in catchable territory. Fisher and Bell were on the coverage, but he was open. He was running a flag move back towards the corner, and Theismann threw it a little bit sooner than he wanted to throw it, and when Sight broke and looked for the ball, it was back behind him. So again, the Redskins' offense fails, and they'll have to punt. Connell, short punt, Fisher fair catch. Got it at about the 19-yard line of the Chicago Bears. And so we are down to 6.19 to go in this period with... The Redskins holding their 17 to nothing lead here in the third. Why is our copier smarter than theirs? Compare the Savin 883 on my left with the Xerox 4000 on my right. You'll find that only one has a microprocessor and an electronic brain that can transform an unclear original into a clear copy. Only one has a fully automatic document feed and only one has an energy-saving automatic shutoff. On all these points, one copier outsmarts the other. The Savin. It could happen to you. Dad. An injury or sickness that stops your income. Dad. But you can help protect your income, your savings, and your family's future with Nationwide's Disability Income Insurance. Dad, I'm like going to med school. You're going to be a doctor. A doctor. Call a Nationwide agent for Disability Income Insurance. Another part of Nationwide's blanket protection. Nationwide is on your side. Chicago. They popped up in Washington last week. They originated in New Orleans. Those are unhappy fans. Either that or the guy just trying to keep his head warm. <laughs> First down. Bears near their own 20. Up the middle. Incomplete intended for Robin Earl, the tight end number 81. Quickly some scores. Pittsburgh won its fourth in a row. They beat the Browns 13 to 7. That is a big game in the AFC Central. San Francisco in front of Dallas, 7 to nothing. Joe Montana to Fred Solomon. A lot of you will be seeing that game later here on CBS today. You saw the Cleveland Pittsburgh score up there. Denver in front of Detroit. The Broncos continue to roll at 7 to nothing in the first period of that game. Tampa leading Green Bay, 21 to 10 at Green Bay. And Houston in front of Seattle, 21 to 10 at Houston. All right, it is second and 10 here. Slot formation right. Vince Evans. Deep sideline complete to Bashnagel. First down play for the Bears out to the 33-yard line of Chicago. Mel Kaufman, reserve linebacker, getting some time. Rookie from Cal Poly and San Luis Obispo on the coverage. Bashnagel's best pattern down and out about 14, 16 yards. The linebacker, Kaufman there, doesn't get there in time in the past, was on the button. And I'll say one thing, the Redskins aren't getting that many sacks against Vince Evans and the Bears, 
but every time he releases the ball, he's being hit. They are close. They're putting pressure every time. Very close. Lorch, Butts, Young, and Manley along the front for Washington. They've been there throughout the game. Willie McClendon cutting it back. Picked up about four yards against the grain. Bring up second and six. You see McClendon following Noah Jackson. The Jackson gets his block, but Lorsch really jammed up the play and forced McClendon to go back against the pursuit. Mark Murphy and Brad Dusick on the hit. Willie McClendon, third-year man from Georgia, was the fourth pick of the Bears in 1979. And the misfortune of being the backup man to Walter Payton has not seen much playing time. Payton has not returned since point out earlier in this period. Evans complete for the first down. Side, that is Dave Williams, number 22, with Jarris White on the coverage, number 45 for the Redskins, and the Bears pick up their second first down on this drive. And Lorch put another big hit on Evans after he threw the ball. We'll have to take a look at the punishment that Vince is taking. He's going to be one beat-up quarterback after this game is over, win or lose. The ball at the 46-yard line of Chicago. Neal, Jackson, Zanders, Van Horn, Albrecht. Offensive line for the Bears. Evans, incomplete for Marjoram. Took the pop from Lamar Parrish, although the ball was over his head. And again, Evans has to pick himself up. has thrown about six or seven straight passes and not once has he been able to throw the ball and stand and watch as to what happened afterwards. He's been on the ground. Noah Jackson came limping out as we see Evan's stats. Not very good. Reeve Sori, who lost his starting job on the right side to Emmanuel Zanders, has gone in to replace Jackson at left guard. Slot formation right for the Bears. Three wide receivers are in. Two running backs, Suey and Williams. Deep sideline, complete the back tackle, incomplete. Did not hold on to it long enough as Lamar Parrish put the hit on it. He okay. had the ball. 84 down and out. Fake the up, give it a double out fake, comes back and Parrish played it pretty well considering and it, made the tack. He got that arm right in on the ball. That's the crafty old veteran at work. He has uh, thir scored 13 touchdowns as a defensive back. He covered 12 fumbles, has 45 career interceptions. What a career Lamar Parrish has had. Eight Pro Bowl appearances for Parrish. Slot formation right, third and 10. Bears have to get it here. Lots of time for Evans. Incomplete for Bastion. They will have to punt. Four thirty remaining, third period. And again. The Bulls greet Vince Evans as he comes to the sideline. What psychological toll will this take on the youngster from USC in his fifth year? 25 years of age, waiting patiently to get the starting role. Has it coming off his best week as a pro last week, but he lost that football game when the Bears did. Today is the disaster. Parsons punt. Nelms fielded it at the kind of fly at the five yard line. A flag is down. Nelms is hit at the seven. One would question uh, his judgment on returning that ball there. Oh, he figured it was so deep that he might have some time to run. Otis Wansley's going to probably get called for a penalty. Wansley was all over that place. You talk about at least giving it a try. He threw a block that I think they're going to call illegal. Then he got up and threw another block and was running all over the place. I don't know if they're going to call it on Wansley, but we'll see. Well, Mike Nelms is a superb returner. But nonetheless, he had to catch that ball practically over his shoulder. It looked like it would go into the end zone, and he was at his five-yard line. And that winds up with a penalty against the Redskins. Illegal block in the back of the waist, number 39, receiving team, first off. Otis Wansley, reserve running back, gets the penalty, and the Redskins will start from just outside their one-yard line. A test of offensive character here. Indeed, more so for the Bears defense. They're down in this game 17 to nothing. Wiggins 
batters his way out close to the five yard line behind the right side blocking of Jones and Jacoby Lee Coons a linebacker the first man on the hit well, this is the Bears chance if they can keep the Redskins bottled up they could get good field position on a punt or force some kind of a mistake because 17 nothing is never a sure thing when you have three minutes and 47 seconds left in the third quarter Riggins flips through a hole, and Riggins all the way up to the 25-yard line. And the cheers for the defense to encourage them turn to booze. Well, this was superb running by Riggins and some sloppy tackling by the Chicago Bears. He jammed in there, two or three misses there, as Riggins just kept his footing, and finally, it's Henderson who brings him down. Sloppy tackling by the Chicago Bears. 20-yard gain for John Riggins, his best of the afternoon, and the Redskins are out of trouble. First down at their 24. High formation. Joe Washington, good defensive play there. Four black shirts around the ball, and dark blue, we should say. Otis Wilson, first man to put the hit on him. Coming up next, following our telecast, those of you along the network except here in Chicago will be seeing this game. Dallas and San Francisco, and how do you like this? Still in the first period, the 49ers lead it 14 to nothing. Paul Hofer has scored on a four-yard touchdown run. They had the second 49er score. Well, he'll help them. Hofer's been out for most of the year. Second and 10 for the Redskins. Riggins. Got a couple of yards. Harry Campbell, linebacker from the right side, in on the tackle for Chicago. It'll be third down and eight. Riggins is 11 for 55, and we now have a passing situation in their own, deep in their own territory. Well, it's not that deep, 25-yard line, 26-yard line. Singletary in as we see the clock time remaining third period. Page out for the Bears. The passing down. Seisman sideliner to Monk. Did he get it inbounds? No, he did not. It is incomplete, and Washington will have to punt. Reuben Henderson, the quarterback number 20, on the coverage. Well, the Redskins lost the ball, will be forced to punt, but that one big first down that they got where Riggins got him out from under their own goalpost was very important. Punter has plenty of room to punt. The Rams have moved ahead of Atlanta with a field goal by Frank Corral with 24 seconds left in regulation time, 37-35 Los Angeles. Connell's punt short, fair catch, Fisher at midfield. Excellent field position for the Chicago Bears. 125 remaining third period. If they can generate something offensively, yes, there is time. But they have shown no indication of generating offense in this game. And when the quarter comes to a close, they'll be working against the wind here at Soldier Field. Vince Evans is 8 for 33. That could be a record the opposite way. Saw the Rams score with less than a minute to go in that football game. As soon as the ball was on his fingertips, he was popped by Rich Millot. Failed to hold on. Second and 10. Line of scrimmage at the 49 of the Washington Redskins. The Bears had to put Robert Fisher, their backup tight end, on injured reserve because of an injury. Robin Earl and Mike Cobb are now the two tight ends. They activated John Skabinski, pullback, and Fisher went on injured reserve. Slot formation right. Lone running back is Sui. Evans. Evans gets it away with a man wrapped around him. A good effort by Vince Evans to unload in the direction of Ken Marjoram. They put the pressure. He had to slingshot at sidearm. We see Lorch 71 coming from the outside. He gets around Van Horn, and Evans has to take that one moment there to find to spot somebody. And here comes Lorch, who will put the hit on him, and he does a great job of getting the ball off before he goes down. Pretty good play by 
Fitz Evans, and the Bears are using three wide receivers plus Dave Williams in the last play, so they've got four. They had four wide receivers in there at that time. Final score, the Jets over New England, another team that, like Washington and Chicago, badly needed a victory. They got it. And the, other, the Patriots needed it, too. Evans up the middle, incomplete for Marjoram. Almost came up with a circus catch. A flag is down at the line of scrimmage. Marjoram may be hurt. He's getting up rather slowly. 175 pounds, and that's with your uniform on. He's not very heavy, but he can bench press 325 pounds as we have a penalty against Washington, which will be good for the Bears. Offside, number 69, defense, still third down. Perry Brooks getting some time at the right defensive tackle spot where Wilbur Young was the starter. Brooks with a sore thumb and a sore neck getting into the action today. Third and five for the Chicago Bears. The ball spotted now at the 44-yard line of Washington. 108 remaining third period. Slot right for Chicago. Twin backs, Larry and Williams. Number 29 had his hands on the ball intended for Dave Williams. Tony Peters came blitzing up the middle. Evans saw him coming and tried to dump the ball off quickly, and Murphy almost had himself an interception. The man from Colgate who led the team in tackles last year, I think he had 140, is Vince Evans. It just can't get anything going. The Rams have defeated Atlanta 37 to 35 in his final one football game in Atlanta. Parsons angling for the sideline perfectly. Fine punt by Bob Parsons. And they're going to spot it at the 13-yard line of the Washington Redskins. Good job by Parsons, who would like to have had it in there a little deeper. Quickly, some other scores. Detroit has scored against Denver as we see that final. Los Angeles, Atlanta. So uh, Los Angeles will be 4-2, and two, Atlanta 3-3. Three, three. Denver leading Detroit 10 to 7. Billy Sims has just scored for the Lions. Houston romping over Seattle now, 28 to 10, late in that game. Neil Armstrong, if he doesn't have ulcers, got to be developing him during this game. First down for Washington. And again, we reiterate to join us along the way. They have not done much offensively. They're in command. Theismann, almost intercepted by Terry Schmidt, intended for Joe Washington. Washington has been Washington's offensive star. Theismann has played tidily, 11 for 23, 72 yards and one interception. Riggins has rolled up 55 yards rushing, uh, much of it on a 20-yard gainer, and Washington has 91 yards on 17 carries, but they have not been an offensive threat. They get into Bears territory and are stopped there. The defense has done it on the scoreboard for Washington. Second and 10, Redskins. No Osborne stopping Joe Washington behind the line of scrimmage at the 10. Now let's go to Brent Musburger in New York for an NFL report. Timmy surprises all over the place. San Francisco's John Dallas 14-0, and here's the field goal. Frank Corral nails it down, and the Rams come back to win it 37-35 over the Falcons. Back to Chicago now, and Tim Ryan. Thank you, Brent. What a football game. Two fine teams. Have an idea that they're going to be uh, right in the thick of things all the way to the wire, those two. Time winding down here on the third quarter. Third down and 13 in Chicago for Washington. Riggins picks up about five, and that'll bring the quarter to a close. It'll bring a fourth down to the Washington Redskins. That's the end of the third quarter with the score Washington 17, Chicago nothing. We'll be back with the start of the fourth quarter after this word from your local station. Next Saturday, Tracy Talavera and Jim Harton compete for individual honors at the U.S. National Gymnastics Championships next Saturday on CBS Sports. This is CBS. You boys are kind of a 
thirsty. Hey, we can give us some all liquor. liquor. Bull or dynamite. Dynamite. Gold 45 and explosion. Loaded with dynamite taste. So grab one down one. Get yourself around one. Gold 45 is a dynamite taste. Say, uh, you guys need a bat boy? <laughs> <laughs> Who won? Call Sports Phone right now. Area code 312-976-1313. Your phone knows the score. It's Saxon's Mixer Match Paint Sale. Two for $12.99. Why pay $10, $11, or $12 for one gallon of this quality? Grab any two gallons for $12.99 at Saxon. If you think you could have VD, call your doctor or the confidential VD hotline at 744-8500. 744-8500. A new season of Two on Two tonight at 10.30. It is fourth down for Washington as we begin the fourth period of play with the Redskins to our left in white, Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris, with Mike Connell standing at the one-yard line to punt for the Redskins. And it's a pretty good punt. Jeff Fisher will return it, gets away from one tackler. Fisher running well gets down to the 35-yard line of the Washington Redskins. Good effort by the rookie from USC. The number seven pick, Mark Murphy, made the tackle for Washington. So the Bears are now in good field position. Let's see what they can do with it here. They're trailing 17 to zip. The Spinnakers are out on Lake Michigan. And I bet everybody's got the long johns on out there sailing today. Well, you can tell how strong that wind is out there, can't you? Well, the... Uh, Offensive ship of the Bears should be moving as well as those sailboats are. They have to throw against the wind, a pretty strong wind. First down in Washington territory. Evans has a man open. Cannot hold on as he was cracked by Mark Murphy. Murphy of the Redskins. 210 pounder against the 240 pounder Robin Earl. Well, here's Vince Evans back to throw the ball, and this time he didn't get hit too hard. In fact, he didn't get hit at all, but there were, the hit was made by Murphy, and several times today, the ball was there, the receiver had it, and a hard jolt knocked the ball loose. That's aggressive defense by the Redskins. San Diego leading Minnesota 7 to nothing in the first period. Evans is now 8 of 37 today. His season passing average has dropped consequently to 42%. Second and ten. Here they come. Oh, hit hard. And did a good job to hold on to the ball. A safety blitz from Jareth White. Uh-oh, he took one right there in the chest because White had the clear shot at him. And that was a jolt. As Jareth White got through slick and clean, Evans may have just had the wind knocked out of him. Uh, he did a great job to hold on to the ball. That was a clean, hard whack. Mike Phipps uh, will probably be the quarterback that will come in for Chicago. He better start warming up. Uh, I'm not sure he'd want to come into this football game. Yes. Okay, here's Evans. He doesn't even have time to set up as he goes back because they had three men blitzing that time. And as he's looking downfield, you're going to see White come from the left. And, boy, he zapped him right in the chest, right through. Boom. And down he goes. He did... Did he throw the ball there? Did he get the ball off? No, he no, he hung, he hung on, on to it. it. Did a great job. Yeah. And it's remarkable that he held on to it. And glad to see him up on his feet. Evans is apparently all right. Now, he'd probably at least take one playoff if it was getting the wind knocked out just to gather himself. Young man from Southern California with 4'6 speed. They wanted to make him a wide receiver. And when he signed his original contract, he said, I want to be a quarterback, and I won't sign unless I can be. As Mike Phipps comes in, who was a Bear starter for a couple of years, this year he is 7 for 12 for 108 yards, hasn't played too much. He played in the Ram game, in the final quarter of the Ram game, and for the Bears' only touchdown as he threw a touchdown pass to Dave Williams. Cincinnati now leading Baltimore 34 to 19 in the fourth period of their game at Baltimore. Third down, 10 to go. Phipps at the controls, number 15. Has some time, now forced out of front. From behind, it's Perry Brooks, the four-year man from Southern. 
putting the tackle on him. What a defensive performance by this Washington Redskins team. As Phipps had some time, but you're going to see Brooks persist and persist and come wheeling out as he comes around Dan Neal here. And as he starts to go, Mike Phipps starts to run out of the pocket. Brooks, who has a sore hand, see his thumb is all wrapped up there. And he takes Phipps down for another sack. The Redskins are starting to get through. Parsons will punt it. Redskins secondary has been very tough on the Chicago passers today. Nelms on the fly. Over the 30-yard line of the 32. The man to get him. Just getting up now is number 63. And that is Jay Hilgenberg, the reserve setter. 13.40 left in regulation time. The Washington Redskins defense continues to be in control. They lead it 17 to nothing. The country that just built the world's fastest train also builds the world's best-selling front-wheel drive car, Renault Le Car. From the French, who can give you comfort at 230 miles per hour, comes this extraordinary car with a most extraordinary price, under $5,000. So why drive an ordinary car when you can have exceptional ride, handling, and interior room for under $5,000? Le Car by Renault, where great engineering lives in great design. At Renault and American Motors dealers. Let the Radio Shack TRS-80 Model 2 give your business the competitive edge. Hey, a TRS-80. You bet. And Radio Shack's programs do my accounting, payroll, inventory, even word processing. But was it tough to set up? Not at all. The TRS-80 has low startup costs, requires no formal training, and it's expandable. Saves me time and money, and that's the competitive edge. The TRS-80 Model 2 from $38.99 only at Radio Shack, the biggest name in little computers. Updating the story of the Detroit Lions in Denver. They're down by 10 points, and here comes Billy Sims behind Bussy. Bussy takes out the first backer. Now watch a straight arm on the second one. Now here comes the cornerback, and Sims cuts on the inside. Two backers miss tackles. Now it's only a race to the goal line. 48 yards, touchdown, Sims. Back to Tim Ryan. Ooh, that figures to be some ball game. Detroit and Denver. And uh, that young lady has probably provided the most excitement for beer fans all day. <laughs> Washington has first down at their own 51-yard line. John Riggins off left tackle, picks his way for about five yards, maybe six. Al Harris and Lee Coons on the tackle. Well, let's see if the Redskins stick to the ground. The last couple of possessions, they went quite a bit to the air after that uh, first down they had down in the Chicago territory. They went to the flea flicker and threw the ball several times and in their second series and they got back here a moment ago they passed two their concern now I would think would be to eat up that clock second and four in motion goes Washington Reagan's the lone back now has the ball and is knocked forward for the first down yardage or very close to it Lee Coons on the hit and it is a first down for the Redskins at their own 42-yard line. Well, next you're going to see along the network except here in Chicago, Dallas at San Francisco. And look at that. The 49ers, 21 to zip over the Dallas Cowboys. I think they're having some fun out there in San Fran today. First down, Washington on the ground first of the day via that route but that time it is stopped cold Joe Washington lost two yards on the play and it was Mike Gary Campbell I believe who was Mike Singletary was Mike Singletary pardon me number 50 not 59 to make the tackle a rookie from Balaam Singletary loss of two second and 12 for the Redskins St. Louis leads the New York Giants seven to nothing in the second quarter at the Meadowlands formation for the Redskins. Joe Washington couldn't quite get around the corner as Dan Hampton, number 99, had him by the jersey. He picked up about four yards, but it'll be third and eight to go for the Redskins. In Bear Territory, I'm sorry, in uh, Washington Territory at the 45-yard line of the Redskins. 
and neither team has been too effective on third down. This has not been a sterling offensive display by either team today. Bears threaten the blitz, and they come with it. Quickly out to the open man, Buck for the first down. Well executed third down play against the blitz. Theismann to Art Monk, number 81. Ruben Henderson made the tackle. Good heads up play. You see 45 Fensick on the blitz. He's picked up by Riggins. And then the little turn in pass, a little quick slant into Monk for the touch for the first down and a key play. Good heads up quarterbacking by Joe Theismann. And this team, as Joe Gibbs said, we're going to put it all together one day. And he was hoping that it was going to be today. And the defense did put it together. But we got to remember this Washington defense is number one in the NFC going into this game. So this shouldn't be a surprise to anybody. First down, now in the Bears territory. Riggins out tackled. Running hard and well for a gain of close to nine on the play before Fensick pulled him down. And the Redskins have now had three or four running plays in this series that have shredded the Bears defense. Cincinnati 34 19 over Baltimore in the fourth quarter. The Bengals will be four and two. Houston uh, leads Seattle 35. Denver Detroit Square. I've got a feeling that's going to be quite a football game before it's over. San Diego in front of Minnesota, 7 to nothing. Washington in motion. Riggins again. This time the Bears stack him up. Linebacker Otis Wilson in there to create some havoc. And then Gary Campbell and Lee Coons getting in to make the stop. Brings up another third down for the Redskins. This one a little shorter, third and two. They're five of 16 in this department. Having successfully converted their last one to keep the drive going. 9-11 and ticking here on the fourth quarter. Coons pulled him down, but Riggins got the first down with the second effort. Boy, you can say that one again. He was hit solidly by Terry Schmidt, I believe, and he yes. broke the tackle and fell forward. Watch number 44 come up from the outside here and make the contact right there. Schmidt, and he just shrugs Schmidt off, gets away from Fensick, gets away from Lee Coons, and finally drags his way across for the first down. What a nice bit of running by John Riggins. The first down has Washington now at the Bears 33 yard line in the I formation. Riggins the lead back. Otis Wansley in motion. Riggins the heavy duty work and rolls and spins his way for a gain of another five. And we have to make it official with Riggins. He has gone over 7,000 yards for his career in rushing. Let's make that a longer gain than five. They mark it at about seven yards. It'll be second and three for the Redskins. He, he had 6,944 going into this game, so he's well over. He has 90 yards so far today. Redskins running game really working against the Bears as they use up that clock, and there's Riggins going to the left side before Harris pulls him down. Another Redskin first down to the 20-yard line. Gary Campbell in on the hit with Harris. Well, one thing became apparent to the Chicago Bears is that Walter Payton was not 100%. He was no factor in this football game. Vince Evans is now injured. Ricky Watts is out with the hamstring pull. Things do not look good for the rest of the hey, season. Oh, Chicago they Bears. do not. Dennis Lick gone to injured reserve. Mike Hartenstein is in at right defensive end. It might be the first time he's been in the game. Harris got the start because of an injured thumb that Hartenstein is suffering from. Riggins with a flag down, diving straight ahead behind the left guard. And the center, Jeff Bostick, picked up about three. Let's see who it's against. Hampton at the bottom of that pile for the Chicago Bears. And uh, here we are up in our broadcast position at Soldier Field. Holding number and, uh, 61. Happily, as we hear the still first off. infraction, happily we're going to be ensconced in some modern facilities here in Chicago next year when they complete the renovation of this 
Old Soldier Field with a whole new press box and broadcast facility. It used to hold 125,000, and of course they've remodeled it, and it's down to 65. There you see St. Louis leading the Jets, the Giants, I should say, seven to nothing. San Francisco 24 to nothing over Dallas. How about that? First and 20 on the holding call against Washington. Uh oh. Riggins gets it outside. Riggins got back 13 yards on that running play. And the Redskins are just now owning the line of scrimmage in this football game. Otis Wilson over there, Al Harris over there to finally stop him. Well, uh, Joe Gibbs, come on, give us a smile, Joe. You got the game wrapped up. He's in the middle. John Riggins got to be happy. 110 yards and 19 carries. That's about what? Figure it out. What? Six, five and a half yards a carry. Ten-year man from Kansas, and he's been suffering from a knee injury, but obviously feeling better today. Second and six. He gained 14 on that last play. Riggins again. And he's stacked up this time after a gain of two out the right side. Gary Fensick coming up. Gary Campbell has the best grip on him. And at the bottom of that pile, it'll be Otis Wilson, number 55. Somebody is hurt down there, one of the Redskins offensive linemen, I believe. Third and three. This has got to be a confidence builder, this drive for that young offensive line. We talked about the injuries and the kids going out there. Mark May, Grimm, Jacoby, Jones, all rookies. And this drive has got to make them feel pretty good. We've got a timeout on the field with 5.55 to play. There's a hungry kind of feeling. Oh! And every day it grows. You know there's so much more to you. Than anybody knows. In the Army, we do more before 9 a.m. than most people do all day. Hey, First Sergeant. Good morning. We need you in the Army. The 1982 Honda Prelude. This comes along once in a blue moon. The Honda Freight. It's the only car in America that comes with a power-operated moonroof as standard equipment. Enjoy it for many moons. Honda, we make it simple. Thursday, a world premiere movie. Every crook's nightmare. Every woman's fantasy. Kevin Dobson is Mike Hammer in Mickey Spillane's Margin for Murder, Thursday. Well, the fans get their say. They pays their money, and they gets to wear paper bags if they wants to. You don't think that's George Hallis underneath there? It couldn't be, could it? No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he would ever express that sentiment, no matter how bad things got. There is still an injured Redskin down on the field. We have been unable to identify him. Tonight on CBS, 60 minutes, followed by Archie Bunker's place, one day at a time. Ellis, the Jeffersons, Trapper John M.D., all tonight on CBS, following our football coverage of the National Football League. Washington now has 205 yards rushing. That's pretty darn good. Chicago has 38 yards rushing. Well, some scores. Uh, we gave you Seattle and Houston standing at 35 to 17 now. But Houston in front, Seattle has just scored. And uh, in the Cincinnati Baltimore game, it is Cincinnati 41 to the Colts 19. I'm taking my coat off. Going out on the field. <laughs> that chant you can hear is from fans down below us who want their old hero Johnny Morris to go out there. We want Johnny. I'm not crazy. You had your blazer off and your pants on, ready to go out there. Well, he still got some good humor here. They'd have to have good humor to suggest that old Johnny could help this club now. You can say that again. <laughs> you bet. Well, there's a stretcher out on the... Uh, field here for Jeez, this, this injured be, redskin we yeah, haven't they've been able to stretch her out for yeah him. we haven't been able to identify who this player is as yet we just have not had a clear view but uh, obviously they're taking all precautions as they properly should for the injured redskin we suspect it as an offensive lineman but now it looks like a 60 something on that jersey 
That wouldn't be Joe Jacoby, would it? Yeah. Well, I don't see uh, among those players standing up in the Redskins offense, I do not see Joe Jacoby. We'll identify it as soon as we have a clear view, obviously. The injuries continue to mount for the Redskins. They've had nothing but problems in this department since the season began. Going with a lot of rookies, and now even the rookies being struck down as a lot of the veterans have suffered from injury. And Russ Grimm, of course, one of the rookies, has been hurt but did get into action today. Joe Jacoby starting on the right side for the injured veteran George Stark, and we believe that it is Jacoby. Let's see that play again that resulted in the injury. Okay, Jacoby is 66. Let's look for him. He's down now, having blocked on Dan Hampton unsuccessfully. On the right of your screen, in the corner, is Joe Jacoby lying on his back. And we do not see him standing up in the offensive lineup of the Redskins, so it does appear to be Joe Jacoby. And Russ Grimm may move over to that right tackle spot with Ron Saul coming back in at left guard. So again, they're going to have to improvise. Here's another look at the play. Riggins was the ball carrier. It's just hard to, you really can't make it out. Yeah, uh, and he's not in that picture there anyway. He's back to the left. What but concerns me is that there are so many bears around there. I mean, uh, and so many people that it could be a little more serious than we first anticipated. 5.55 remains in regulation time. Are the Redskins holding a commanding lead? Defensive work in the first half, contributing to all of their points. This has been their best offensive drive. And they've done it well on the, on the ground in this last series of plays with John Riggins getting the heavy work. And uh, we're now, now quite certain that it is Jacoby because he is not standing up out on the field. So hopefully it's uh, not, as, uh, not a serious injury. And uh, it gives us this opportunity now with the continuing timeout to remind you about our action next week on CBS. All of you will be seeing what should be a great game between Philadelphia and Minnesota. The Eagles continued unbeaten with a victory today. Then a doubleheader action. Folks on the Washington Network will see the Redskins down at Miami, and Bears fans will see the Central Division Tampa Bay Buccaneers take on the Super Bowl champion Oakland Raiders, who were shut out once more today. Remember to join Brent Musburger and the NFL Today crew for previews and highlights of all the NFL action. That's next Sunday, quite an afternoon of football coming up on CBS. So Joe Jacoby has been uh, taken off the field. He's being taken off on a stretcher, and there are the sentiments. They not only want you to play, they also want you to coach here, Johnny. Our guy, Johnny Morris. Well, you, you volunteered not to play. What's your feeling on coaching, Johnny? I would volunteer not to coach also. <laughs> <laughs> well, Neil Armstrong will be happy to hear that. 5.52 remaining to play. We'll try and get word on Jacoby as soon as possible for his friends and relatives looking on back in Washington. The rookie from Louisville had himself a fine afternoon out here. It is third down and a long two as we get back to the action. Riggins has it. Busting his way close to the goal line is stopped at the two. John Riggins got a little rest from all of the work he had in that series and uh, with fresh legs batters his way for yet another first down and goal to go. Boy is he coming through for the Redskins because of the fact that Wilbur Jackson was injured they really needed him and look at this 22 carries for 124 yards. He's back in the game. Reuben Henderson and Gary Campbell the men to stop him short at the two. But the Redskins on the doorstep for what would be their first offensive touchdown of the day. Riggins will score. John Riggins and some happy offensive line, deservedly so, are over there to congratulate Riggins and they should be congratulating each other. They mowed down the field with 4.45 to go. The young offensive line of the Redskins opening the holes for Riggins. And as you can see Melvin Jones coming out throwing a key block. Riggins dipped to the outside and I don't think there was much deception in this drive. Did anybody carry besides John Riggins in this entire drive? Maybe once. Maybe well, once. As Coons missed the tackle, Riggins in for the touchdown. He goes over 
128 yards for rushing. There it is. Melvin Jones got a good block for him. Mosley's point after is good. The Redskins used up eight minutes on the clock. 14 plays. They used up nearly nine minutes. 14 plays, 69 yards for the score, and 8.55 on the clock. So there is how it stands with 4.45 to play. The Redskins headed to their first victory. At GMC, we've been all about trucks for over 75 years. In fact, it seems that whenever a truck job comes along, there's a GMC dealer with a truck to do it. Big, small, and in-between size GMCs, shouldering the load and keeping an eye on costs. Like our new 82 trucks with a new 6.2-liter diesel engine, available in full-size pickups, Suburbans, and four-wheel drive jimmies. Offering a full line of trucks is our full-time job at GMC, because trucks are what we're all about. Michelob brings you the seven-day weekend, downbeat style. Whether it's jazz, classical, country, or rock, music and Michelob is always the perfect arrangement because that smooth and mellow taste helps make any time feel a little like a weekend. Put a little weekend in your week. Ryan with the Chicago's People's Choice, Johnny Morris. They want him to play. They want him to coach. We want to keep him right here with us. And we have 4.45 to go as we see the numbers up on that Washington drive. Quickly some scores. Cincinnati now final over Baltimore, 41 to 19 for the Bengals. The Giants have scored a field goal. They trail St. Louis 7 to 3 in the second period. Minnesota has scored Tom Kramer to Ricky Young. It is 7 to 7 against San Diego. Jeff Fisher taking Connell's kickoff out to the 38-yard line for Chicago, where Virgil Say has made the uh, stop for the Washington Redskins. And so the Bears will have first down starting at their 38-yard line is where they've spotted the ball. Mike Phipps has come back in a quarterback, so Vince Evans is probably finished for the day. We don't know the extent of his injury, nor Jacoby yet. The word on Jacoby is that it is a neck injury, but we have no more details than that at this moment. Slot formation left for the Bears. Phipps to throw on first down. Complete to McClendon, hit immediately. A gain of three, maybe four yards. Jerris White, number 45, putting the hit on him. We understand that Evans' injury is nothing serious and that they've just decided to let him sit out for the rest of this game. Detroit has gone in front of Denver now, 14 to 10. Billy Sims has scored his second touchdown of the game. Second down and six for the Bears. Phipps complete to Marcus Anderson, a rookie wide receiver, stopped short of the first down, but a gain of about five on the play. Joe Lavender, number 20, made the hit. Anderson, a first-year man from Tulane, picked up after the Rams cut him this year. He's a late cut of the Rams. I think he's got fine potential here in Chicago. Third and one. Anderson out, McClendon in. Williams and Marjoram out, so they've got double tight ends in. Cobb and Earl. Third and short. Walter Payton has not returned to the game since early in the third quarter. McClendon diving has the first down for the Bears to the 49-yard line of Chicago. Much of this 64,000 attendance has departed from Soldier Field. There's Walter Payton. Not seriously hurt as far as we know. Probably just aggravated the thigh injury came into the game with. Ran well on the opening series of plays for the Bears. But when they got behind, Things did not go so well, and he's been sitting. Blitzing him. Phipps throws it up, and it is incomplete, intended for Marjoram with the coverage by number 24, Lamar Parrish. Parrish, by the way, if you haven't noticed, has been outstanding today defensively for the Washington Redskins. Both of these teams are going to be 1-5 after this game, but 
one is kind of going the opposite direction of the other. The Redskins, uh, you know, things may they didn't have any really key mistakes today. They didn't have those turnovers, and uh, they looked good in winning this football game. Whereas the Bears, at their one and five, seem to be going the opposite way. You saw the clock indicating 2.35 to go. This is second and 10 for the Bears. Draw play. Dave Williams got running room. Joe Lavender pulls him down, but not before a Bears first down at the 35-yard line of the Redskins. I'm not sure there are going to be too many people in the stands to see a touchdown if Chicago gets it as Williams off the draw makes a nice move, gets a good block from Bashnagel coming back across and... Finally is knocked down by Lavender with the necktie tackle. First and ten. Pips under pressure from Lorch. Tackled by Carl Lorch, number 71. That's four sacks for the Washington Redskins. Time out on the field here, the two minute warning with the Redskins 24 and the Bears nothing. Oh, hey, over here! Hey, 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 hey. Yeah, yeah. Just come around here. Yeah. Hiya, Phil. Looks like we got here just in time. I'm well, glad to see you. Hop on in here. Okay. Oh, 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 oh hey, wait a minute. Oh. We don't have room for your TV. Uh, well, uh, I guess I'll just have to wait for the next boat. There's only one television that people are absolutely crazy about. Trinitron from Sony, the one and only. Ford and Lincoln Mercury introduce a better way to beat the high cost of financing. It's called upfront money, and it lets you save now, not later. Right now, you can get from $400 to $500 cash on a new Escort or Lynx, $600 on Mustang or Capri, $700 on EXP or LN7. Apply it to your down payment or get a check direct from Ford or Lincoln Mercury. Upfront money. Because the less you pay for a car, the less you have to finance. Updating the story out in Denver. Billy Sims has scored his second touchdown of the day. 13 carries, 123 yards. Sims and the Lions lead the Broncos 14-10. Back to Tim Ryan in Chicago. All right, Brent. Well, I expected that was going to be a real good football game. It looks like it's shaping up to rival uh, L.A. Atlanta today. Dexter Manley was injured on that last play, the rookie from Oklahoma for Washington. But as you can see in that picture, he's okay. Second and very long following the sack. Pips on Lions are down. Pips is back at his 30-yard line and is out of bounds all the way back at the 35. Make it the 36. Now the flags are down up at the line of scrimmage. Lorch and Butt used up a lot of yardage chasing Phipps back about 30 yards. But let's see who the penalty is against. Apparently it's against Washington. They may have hit a receiver or done some defensive holding down the field because it was thrown over here on this uh, near this sidelines. Mel Kaufman was over there. I don't know if they called it on him or not, but that's a big play, a turnaround of a lot of yards. Down. Wilbur Young back in for Brooks at right defensive tackle was offside. And so uh, what could have been a big loss becomes a five-yard gain via the penalty route. Makes it second and about 18 for the Chicago Bears. The ball at the Washington 43. 146 remaining in the football game. Pips with time. Deep is man is open. scores his first touchdown as a pro. A 43-yard touchdown toss from Mike Phipps. And the Bears have finally broken the ice. And Phipps had pretty much time this time to throw the ball as he went forward and caught a good blocking by Van Horn. And there was Arneson went to the corner. And really, he wasn't covered. Perry's came back. Perry's wasn't a man-for-man -man situation and beaten on the play. He beat his own down there and got it in for the touchdown. Marcus Anderson, the first-year man from Tulane, a speed burner, recently acquired from the Rams and does his job today. So at least the Bears have avoided the shutout with 1.37 to go. 
It'll be John Roberto, their new place kicker, getting the extra point. And quickly, some other scores. A final uh, Houston over Seattle, 35 to 17. And we'll come back with some more when we return to Chicago with Washington leading at 24 to 7. Alcoa presents fantastic finishes. 1967. Johnny Unitas and the Baltimore Colts trail Green Bay 10 to nothing with just 51 seconds left. First, Unitas arches a perfect pass to Jimmy Orr. Then a successful onside kick. And here come the Colts again. Unitas fires a strike to Willie Richardson. A 13 to 10 victory delivered by Johnny U. Alcoa can't wait. For half a century, aluminum has played an important role in the development of the automobile. That's especially true today. Aluminum's now being used in dozens of new ways to reduce weight and increase fuel economies. There's a real demand for the lean and lively cars of the 80s, because the more aluminum we put into them, the more MPGs you get out of them. We can't wait for tomorrow. Alcoa can't wait. Neil Armstrong, at least uh, not looking at zeros up there. Mike Phipps to Marcus Anderson. 43-yard touchdown pass for the Bears. 24 to 7 now. 137 remaining to play. Meanwhile, it is also 24 to 7. Much earlier in that football game, San Francisco leading Dallas. The Cowboys have just scored. There's the drive. Using up 3.08 on the clock, however, and the onside kick try is fielded perfectly by Tony Peters. And the Redskins will have first down at the Bears' 40-yard line. John Rovetto's onside try kicked right at Tony Peters, who did his job. So the Redskins have the ball and should be able to use up the rest of this time in about 134, which is all that's up there. Our executive producer today, Terry O'Neill. Our senior producer, Charles H. Milton III. And today's game here in Chicago, produced by Jim Silman and directed by Larry Cavallina. We thank our Chicago-based crew, associate producer Paul Art, field technical manager Joe Tier, and the rest of our outstanding staff doing their usual good job here in Chicago. Joe Washington trying to get wide, hauled down from behind by Otis Wilson, number 55. Minnesota has moved in front of San Diego, 14 to 7. They're in the second period at San Diego. A couple One. of Touchdown passes for Tommy Kramer in that one. The Bears have called a timeout with 126 left. Tim Ryan and Johnny Morris here. They tried to draft Morris into playing uniform and into the head coaching job. But he has just reiterated here to our regional television audience. He intends to stay on as for the rest of this game at least as our analyst. You bet. And there's <laughs> Joe Gibbs talking with Joe Theismann. I'm sure he's saying. Keep that ball on the ground. Let's make them use up those timeouts and put this ball game away. As the fans show Walter Payton's picture, and there's a man who was not too much of a part of this game, a factor in this game, because of injuries and because they're starting to bear in on him. Whenever he gets his near the ball, there's a swarm all over him. Denver has gone in front of Detroit, 17 to 14. A touchdown from Craig Morton to Steve Watson. Otis Wansley, number 39, the rookie from Alcorn State, picking up five yards for the Redskins. San Diego has just scored to tie up their game against the Vikings. Dan Fouts passing to Dwight Scales, a 60-yard scoring play in the second period. That one get it in up about 41 to 40, and both of those teams can move the ball. Yep, that sounds like it's gonna be like that tremendous Rams-Atlanta game today. We're in the final minute here with the ball on the 35-yard line of the Bears. The Redskins headed to their first victory of the season. The Bears headed to their fifth defeat. Wansley again batters his way for about four yards. He almost got the first down. Good running by Wansley. The clock is going down, going down. 28 seconds left in this football game. It's a fourth down situation. We might not even, we could barely get a playoff. They could get one playoff, but I. 14 seconds and ticking. Ricky Klatt, reserve running back, just re-signed, trying to get into the game. 
for the final play, but it doesn't look like he's going to make it. They're just going to let her count here, and that's going to be it. The boos come up again from the Bears fans. The final score here will be a Redskin victory. Tim Ryan for Johnny Morris saying so long from Soldier Field in Chicago, where once again the final score, the Redskins 24 and the Bears 7. And stay tuned for the second half of today's doubleheader, where most of you will be seeing Dallas against San Francisco. CBS Sports coverage of the National Football League will continue after this word from your local station. If you have something nasty to say, don't say it on paper. We know someone who did, and it may cost his boss $9 million. Tonight on CBS. This is CBS. Maybe people know that they can depend on it, and that gives them a very good feeling. The 1982 Toyota Corolla. Depend on it. Corolla! Out of gas? Yeah. Boy, are you in luck. You can take the Amoco One Tank Test. One Tank Test? Sure. Ever have engine problems like knock and run on? <laughs> Doesn't everyone? Well, when you need a fill up, get a full tank of the 14 benefits in high octane Amoco premium lead free. Could solve your engine problems from that first tank full. Boy, are you in luck. <laughs> The sweater season is here, and the touchdown sale at Marshall Fields is on. On the men's side, we have Marshall Fields' great lambs wool argyle sweaters, just $29.99, and lightweight moreno wool v-neck solids, now just $25.99. And on the women's side, showing great form today, acrylic turtleneck cowls, only $11.99, Shetland wool cable knits, just $18.99, and Marshall Fields' own zigzag crew neck, just $23.99. This season, win the sweater bowl during the touchdown sale at Marshall Fields. A salute to Jack Brickhouse tomorrow on Noonbreak. We now join the Bill Cosby Show, already in progress. I think I'm going to go to bed and go to sleep. Don't you worry, I'll keep it down low.